guys welcome back to spooky tuesday a weekly podcast where we're breaking down all of our favorite slashers thrillers monster movies and black comedies on the new scariest day of the week i'm sydney thompson i'm monica height and i'm chelsea duff and it's my birthday today oh Yay! my god well happy it's her birthday, birthday. birthday on the day of recording yeah. not on the day, day of recording. you listen to this a birthday episode that came out last week and in the time that you're listening my birthday was last week but in the time that we're recording it's right now so i'm claiming a second birthday episode it's chelsea and palooza it's, it's chelsea palooza, palooza. a whole and week of chelsea if you don't know As what we're chelsea. doing maybe this is a clue a but clue. before we get to the episode we have a reminder for you guys that last week, starting last week, we had our fall merch drop go available for pre-orders. So it's on pre-sale right now. You can go to our website, SpookyTuesdayPod.com, click merchandise, and it will take you to our little shop where you can order some cutesy, demure little items, a little sexy t-shirt or a sweatshirt or a tote bag. Everybody loves a tote bag a beanie if your head feels cold mine feels cold right now that's why i've got hood on Ooh, um, big hood. i know some of you don't live in california where we're having record-breaking heat so you want to be <laughs> cozy wozy in your little sweatshirt and matching mm-hmm. cap how yeah. wonderful and then if you get too hot you can take your sweatshirt off and put it in the tote bag and reveal that you have the shirt oh on God. underneath what I plan. it's a win, crazy win, win, outfit win, idea actually I think that sounds really beautiful and also meaningful and also spiritually healing, maybe. Mm-hmm. I totally agree. And also, it's been brought to my attention that the slime green version of our art is very brat. And so, brat autumn, brat. we all brat. know that it's a thing, or broadum, broadum. if you want to say that. <laughs> um, you could participate in broadum so easily by getting the slime green version of our design. So, yeah. Come on, yes. don't you want to be culturally irrelevant in the exactly. year of our Lord 2024? Uh-huh. It's enticing. It's provocative. And it's, it's really available right now going. at SpookyTuesdayPod.com. And Slash I'm going to cry like a big baby if nobody wants anything. So, Yeah, just click on that merch button. You'll go crazy. We'll and also have it in the birthday. show notes. It's, it's my her birthday. birthday don't make her cry. Come on, it's my birthday. Oh it's my god, her tears, tears are welling in her eyes. <laughs> it's my birthday. Look at my Don't smudged worry. under eyeliner. Can't you tell I've already been crying just at the thought? She's been crying all day. But you want to know who oh. else's birthday it is, Chelsea? <gasps> who? <gasps> it is our girl's birthday. Tell him, Chelsea, tell him. You're talking about Renez Magpullen, or are you talking about I mean, Tree no. from Happy Tree. Death Day? Well, right now, it's, it's also Renez May's birthday. birthday. It's also Renez May's birthday. birthday right now. It's Rigatoni's <laughs> birthday from Breaking Dawn Part 2. I'm it's meaningful. also my cousin's dog's birthday, so everybody say happy birthday to her also. Oh, and my grandparents' dog. Why do so many dogs share my birthday? What's that about? It's my favorite old dog bitch death birthday day day. today What's so r.i.p watson he's been gone for oh four years well watson okay. was not a bitch because watson was a boy but watson can be an honorary bitch for this moment exactly he was that bitch i appreciated your segue though um what you were trying to do is get us back on topic and i will get back to that because we're doing <laughs> special second chelsea birthday episode this week and it had come up recently on our 200th episode. We'd been talking about it. Maybe last year actually would have been the moment because last year they had a Monday the 18th and Tuesday the 19th, but we didn't do it last year. We're doing it this year. So we're going to just make do. We weren't ready last year. We weren't ready. No. We needed at least one year <laughs> we to needed feel the next emotionally year. prepared. Because um, if you guys know Spooky Tuesday podcast lore, um, you might already know that we did, before we launched this podcast, we did a practice episode just to, a little you know, run. try to get our feet Which underneath us. Be like, yeah. what's the deal? How do we go about this? What's our vibe? Um, there are many the ways to do a podcast. With, there, there's so many ways. The movie that we practiced with was Happy Death Day. Um, and thank God we did a practice episode 
because there was um, some troubleshooting that needed to be done and um, we needed to get some um, rigidity out of our system so that we could be fun and loosey goosey from there on out. This is how we learned that this is not going to be a recap podcast. And that is why it, it is not yeah. a recap podcast. This is not a vibe podcast. podcast. Oh my God, was it so challenging trying to go through? Not, I mean, I took way more extensive notes this time around. Um, But when we tried to do this as a practice episode, we got really hung up on being like, and then she does this way, and then she does that way, and then she does this way. And also, one of the other things that I remember was Monica being like, that's UCLA um and it is it is, it is UCLA. ucla so that's i'm gonna that say that again oh, well maybe for less time this time because it was a lot it was a long conversation last time um but okay. i think it's still important to acknowledge you know that's your alma mater um but you know the thing that is really special about this episode is that it's not just happy death day it's also happy death day to you because if you ask me Happy Death Day to you is a perfect sequel. And this is a perfect double feature. And they're Agreed. just the most beautiful films you could ever possibly watch back to back. Um, and I that's that's for my birthday. That's what I needed us to do. So that's what we're doing. I love that we're doing two double features in this month. Oh my God, we're really I leveling love that up as a podcast. Also, like, you're lucky it's your birthday because you came from my life two minutes ago and I won't forget it. <laughs> wait till tomorrow bitch (laughs) that's that's like my main um thing that I remember from that's like the main talking point that I was like okay that that got ingrained in there to harp on it more my god we're talking about happy death day (laughs) you can cut this out Sydney Uh, (laughs) but yeah these, these are beautiful movies they're wonderful movies if you haven't seen them I mean all you need to know is horror movie time loop Groundhog Day esque um, mm-hmm. But I'll give you the IMDb log lines because at least one of them is kind of interesting. Um, the first one, Happy Death Day. A college student must relive the day of her murder over and over again in a loop that will end only when she discovers her killer's identity. And then the second one, the second log line is Tree Geldman. That's the college student from the first log line. Tree Geldman discovers that dying over and over was surprisingly easier than the dangers that lie ahead. Dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. Uh, Interesting. I just think, I think these movies are a perfect pair. I think they're so interesting in conversation with each other. So I'm not sure yet if our vibe is going to be like one and then the other. Um, But we can start with the first one at least. Yeah, I mean, we got to set the ground for ground, but like it literally they just flow literally exactly into each other. They pick up Mm -hmm. at the precise moment that the last one uh, left off on. So it just was a seamless four hours for me. Uh, I watched it back to back and it really was was. like, oh, okay. That's what I did last night and then again today. Yeah, I just got through through one time, but like. I forgot how much I love these movies and it really is a picture of like the fashion of that moment too. Holy shit. Like looking at her. Yeah. Oh yeah. We want to talk about my secondary cosplay. Oh, Oh, slay. So spot on. (laughs) Thanks. That's my backup cosplay. It was really hot in the sweatshirt. So that's really hot looking at you now. Let's get going. Let's go. Chelsea did two costumes to compensate for the fact that Sydney and it's, I did zero. Yeah, and it's also a double feature, so it was called for two. So it's Listen, my dressing birthday. Dressing up is hard all the time, okay? This yeah, is it is. But I had this actually. wig from my Megan costume last year for Halloween. Oh, Slay. So. I wanted to be Danielle because I have all of the clothes to be her little prepster bitch outfit with the little ascot. But mm-hmm. my spirit She's did not guide hot. me to a cosplay moment today, unfortunately. But just you know, know I would have fucking slayed it. <laughs> Sometimes you have to be yourself, and that's beautiful. Thank you. And Sometimes just so you everyone have to knows, I'm not naked. I'm wearing a and shirt. Be underneath. who you are. <laughs> Boo, take it off. <laughs> I'm not wearing the minion outfit this time, though. 
I wore this on the podcast. I wore a yellow shirt and Adam called me a minion and then I killed him and he's dead now. So RIP <laughs> Adam. Too bad. Thank God in the time it, loop. He'll come back tomorrow. Um, exactly. Did you see how I did that? I brought us back to the movie. It's so beautiful. I just it's so it's so fucking smart this movie even though there's so many dumb little shitty ass jokes in this movie too (laughs) that I'm like oh god at least the jokes that are uncomfortable are supposed to be uncomfortable because Danielle is a terrible person and that's the whole point the most offensive things I've ever seen in a movie in these movies well primarily the first one but she got the blind stuff in the second one's pretty bad yeah, but at know, least she's so... not trying yeah. to be mean. Um, but she's just one stupid in the first part, and then in the second part, she's just being a theater bitch, you know? Yeah, so true. She was Fair. acting. She's acting an actor. An actor. She's an actress. She was blind, just like um, Anne Frank. Oh my just god! Like, you guys know that Anne Frank was blind and deaf. Yeah, crazy. Um, yeah, she. Who knew that I learned so much from this film? <laughs> um, but yeah, I just, I love it. And also I forgot about Carter Israel. How do you say his name? Israel Broussard, that actor who is okay. also into all the boys I loved before yeah. around this time too. And like Sydney and I were. We Monica and I together. were big into that movie actually. Mm-hmm. And I'm a hun- I'm in love. I'm in love with him. I'm in love with him, and he hasn't yeah. been working that much since these movies. And I'm devastated. Israel, That's why where we are need you? The third movie to come out. Didn't he have some kind of scandal? No, I, I, I think he might have, but it was like a small scandal, maybe. Scandal? I'm looking it up. Why do I? I never it hear about these scandals until nature. we're on the record. <laughs> Literally, I never. I'm. I'm gonna look up the word scandal after. Anyway, while I find out that my true love is now dead, someone else take the la- the reins. <laughs> Your true love can be Carter and Josh, and you can. I think you know there are so many feelings for the characters that people portray, and sometimes those can be to to some degree divorced from the actor that portrays them. Uh, Slash... No, he racially insensitive. Oh. Please. Yeah, I'm mm-hmm. trying to figure out what he said. Oh, oh my God, oh, no. it's bad. Oh, it's bad. <laughs> <laughs> it's something Danielle would have said. Right. It's something Danielle would have said. Okay, um... moving on. It's not to be repeated. Google it if you want to feel upset. Yeah. Well, I do not support him now. Anyway, good thing. This is goodbye. Classic but... Hollywood. Um. <laughs> goes back away sometimes anyway back to the movie we'll just dive in there instead um we can talk about carter because carter is okay he seems a little questionable at first because tree makes some points where she's like you took a drunk girl back to your room what's that about do we want to talk about Mm -hmm. that um because the movie opens with tree waking up in his bed in his shirt with no pants on um and she does not know it yet but he slept in another bed but he's just over in the corner of the room we find out a movie and a half later getting his mouth guard from behind the desk which is also questionable um like what's okay he doing honestly there? as a girly who sleeps with a mouth guard sometimes you it goes sometimes crazy you in the night spit it all the way across the room Mine or you always... sit it down and you knock it on the ground and then your cat plays with it and it's horrifying things it's never happen with my mouth guard but i don't have a cat so every time i had a retainer <laughs> Uh, it always ended up like at the foot of the bed. No idea why. It it was just oh my God. every Actually, single day my night. friend like, recently was like, I lose my mouth guard all the time when I wake up. And time. I was like, what do you mean? Mine's always in my mouth. But I guess I'm just a very cute, contained Demure. sleeper. Demure. Yeah, the theme I got of the a day. mouth tape and it's the greatest thing that I have oh ever done. Oh my God, you're doing done. that? Yeah. I like sleep it. So we gotta talk about that later because I really do not know what that even means. <laughs> it's and good it for scares snoring. Me. I have a so hard time. You breathe through your nose. And I can't breathe out of one of my nostrils. So I like so when just I, <laughs> like really well, puffing. When I sleep, I mouth breathe. And so it forces me to like breathe out of my one good nostril. You wake yeah. up with a, a throat that feels so normal instead of dry and sore. Yes. Okay, Good I'm gonna be you, girl. so honest. I I went in raw to this experience where I did not do any fucking research on this at all, and I read zero things. I just watched the movies. But okay. the one thing that I always remember when I watch this movie is the like 
licensing issue with the music because in the trailer for this uh, movie her ringtone well. is which song do you guys remember the, in the oh, club go shawty it's, it's, your, it's birthday. your birthday we got yes. a party yes. like it's your birthday the only birthday song that i won't cry to if you sing to me actually oh. noted okay Filing sorry away. that i sang the stevie wonder happy birthday song earlier but it wasn't to you so i hope that was exactly. okay um but yeah i just the song that they have still to this day because you have to hear it so many times in this movie the the song that they had to go with i just fucking can't stand it <laughs> well they it's an original composition for this film actually you know they gotta do it who wrote that is that is, is that carter I think lori in universe wrote it she's canonically the one who changed tree's phone that's a detail that yes. i caught and wrote down this time around yeah. she wanted the birthday thing to torture her all day long she said i know you're trying is. to hide that it's your birthday because i know that's traumatic for you to have birthday and to remember birthday and to remember all the ways that you are not celebrating the way that you used to celebrate so i'm really mm -hmm. gonna rub it in and i'm gonna go i got you a cupcake bitch and i um want you to hear this every single time that your dad or anyone else calls you today um uh, but especially your dad as you ignore him 500 times so. yeah Ugh. I don't know I this movie like just is such a picture I just feel like it's so close to like our college experience I didn't go mm. to I didn't have a sorority so I didn't have yeah. that aspect of it but just like the way that it all looked like Carter looks like this guy that I had a crush on in college so that's another thing too it's like exactly my type in college scrawny little weenie <laughs> boy who's yep. tall who has Sorry. like kind of bad sideburns. Yeah, who's got like ass style, horrible style, but whatever, <laughs> that's fine. Like, well, and his dumpster funk. It's flannel. Is... His style is flannel shirt yeah. and t-shirt, which Everybody is like loves that flannel shirt one of boy. them. It's yeah. not his fault that he's you know in existing in mostly just one day the whole movie. Yeah. No, it's okay. I just had that one option the whole, for two whole fucking movies for the most part. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, he doesn't okay. change it up much. I'll I'll let that slide. And I'm sorry, I'll just say this. The UCLA of it all, that was crazy too. And then also Danielle is played by uh, Rachel Matthews and I like grew up with her. <laughs> Did you really? <laughs> yeah. She's such a sexy icon. Oh my God, she's so hot. And I'm so glad she's doing so well. She's got like the fucking slayest jawline in the fucking game, I would say, right. of our generation. Oh. Um, So good for her. I haven't talked to her in like 15 years, but. Hey, Rachel, great job in this. <laughs> Respectfully, her in this movie, her her in the red shirt when she's got the high ponytail and her boobies are like this. And the second yeah. one, that's one of yeah. the sexiest outfits known to man. I, as somebody who is very boobalicious, you know, am going to mm -hmm. start saying my third one's up here, actually. Yeah, <laughs> that my, my, third my one's head's in the, the one in the middle is what she says. Yeah, I uh, yeah, face the one in the middle. It's so funny. She does have She's some like really fucking awesome lines. She has some of the worst Her lines. Her delivery yeah, ever. is really good though too, and that's Rachel Matthews. Yep. Her delivery the lines is are Danielle. so bitchy. Her delivery is so bitchy. I just like we're talking about it right now. The one where she pretends to be like a deaf person speaking that's though. the most offensive thing i've ever seen yeah i almost threw up i was like what what what's happening and then i was like oh oh no oh yeah my god oh it, sweet it, jesus it can't get much worse than that you know no it really really can't she just comes for but like similar to scary movie she's yeah. like coming for everyone no <laughs> she is an equal opportunist bitch yeah um so yeah gotta love her though mm -hmm. <laughs> Oh, man. But yeah, I but just, I, in this movie, watching it this time around, I really was like, Ruby is so obviously the uh -huh. person in the beginning, but I guess you're supposed to, once the tombs of it all comes in, that's supposed to be like, oh, we've solved it. Red uh -huh. herring kind of yeah. thing. But she's so fucking yeah. sus from moment one. <laughs> Yeah, it's so interesting to do a rewatch because there's so much there to pick up on, but you just like are overlooking it at first because Tree is such a bitch that anytime somebody reacts to her with hostility, you're like, well, that makes sense because she's such a fucking bitch. Such a bitch. She's such a bitch. Uh, 
them and she just you know it it's like yeah she throws the cupcake on the ground or in the trash or whatever and she's like too many carbs two dolls um and you're like yeah that makes absolute sense why Lori hates her right now um even though it's her birthday and presumably Lori was just trying to do something nice um mm. and also I think in many ways sorry we've already done spoilers but that's just the nature of things and you're gonna have to move with it this episode i think you don't want Lori to be the answer you know what i mean explicitly because of what they like address in their final confrontation when it's like you're killing me because of some guy it's like that's what we're doing in 2017 like you don't want that to be it but then the way they handle it it's kind of like well slay um and then the way they handle it again in the sequel is also like, okay, I'm on, you know, I they're winning me over. Like, the way that they pull off all of the things, for the most part, that you're like, why are you doing that? I don't want you to be doing that. Um, mm-hmm. Like, in the beginning of the second movie, when they make you think for a moment that this movie is about Ryan. Um, and you're like, no, watch a whole Ryan time loop movie i don't want to do that like he's i fine. think he's ryan's a really side cute character i think he's really cute but i also think he is um a lot and mm-hmm. jessica rothy carries this whole franchise on her back and is like power lifting it the whole time you know For what i mean she is, she's bench pressing it over her head um, she literally crushed it she literally crushed it. She's the emotional heart of this whole. I would watch her in this role for 500 years. I could watch Seriously. six of these movies back to back without stopping for a bathroom if I had to. Um, Just her like her growth as a character is so cool to see because she goes from being such a cunt bitch like not danielle <laughs> level but she's up there like just mm-hmm. underneath just a hair less she's being a less uh ableist i would say and that's about it um <laughs> but <laughs> you look like a hot bitch by the way birthday girl Thank you. Uh, <laughs> but like it's so cool to watch a character like have like a growth, ethical like growth like like re- rehabilitation and have it make sense the way that this does because yeah. this is like a fucking horrifying experience like this movie is a horror movie yeah and it's horror comedy and it, it's a slasher you know what i mean but like it's not scary in that way but just the concept in and of itself if you think about it too long is so fucking horrific and the fact that like i we can talk about this more later i don't know if it makes sense but the fact that like the her deaths like stay in her body and like build up scar tissue and different other things i don't think it makes sense throughout the whole movie that that's a thing but like the fact that she's getting weaker and weaker each time it's taking away more but she's like gaining more like emotional growth throughout Mm -hmm. i don't know i just think it's well written it's very interesting yeah no it's super interesting the way that they do it um and it just is she's just jessica rothy is a fantastic actress in this role it really is just incredible the way that she's able to sell like the these very feral moments and also like this bitchiness while you're still kind of rooting for her the way that she's able to deliver things that from somebody else they would just would not be able to pull it off like she i oscar for her in this in this role in this franchise um but she she really is the um the the premise is good the premise is fun groundhog day with slasher love it i'm already in you know what i mean but like I haven't seen groundhog day it's like this except nobody's trying to kill him um he oh, just thing I didn't goes wa- to sleep and then wakes up same day again yeah okay and if he I was kills gonna himself watch it today to get it I- you know i was really gonna watch to. it today to get it and then i was like no i'm not <laughs> i can't there do are that parts again of it that's like they're like really clearly pulling from um in a trope capacity like oh i'm like when okay when she goes across the quad and she's like perfectly prepared she like borrows the pillow and she like perfectly times like oh i sign the petition and i yell out for the sprinklers for people Mm -hmm. and i put the pillow down for the guy who falls and i steal the sunglasses off of the goth kid which is her one bad act in that one um and then she goes up to trey and she preaches self-acceptance to him and goes love is love um you know it's like she nailed all of the things that she needed to do that day because she's done it so many times that's like very groundhog day is like 
he's learned like everything that needs to be done in this town including okay. like oh a boy falls out of a tree and so it's like he nails the timing perfectly so he could like save the boy falling out of the tree you know what I mean it's that kind of thing and it's like I prove to somebody else that I'm stuck in this time loop by being like three two one boy falls out of tree or whatever it is you know yeah. what I mean um so, so that's that really what, what it's from yeah. Gun, say, okay and like in Groundhog Day in Groundhog Day he's also having like a character growth journey but it's kind of like he's just a little bit of a selfish asshole and he like finds love basically you know what I mean and it's like okay bad guy um, wins yeah you know <laughs> but it's a man Bill learns Murray. to care for other people I revolutionary like which like sometimes it is um and <laughs> right. also you know maybe they did it first I don't know I'm not familiar with the history of the time loop trope um but this actually this movie is more this similar one. they did it for this one um, this is more similar to another movie called 1201, which they kind of reference in the sequel by being like, oh, Sissy went off by herself at 1201 a.m. And in that movie, the person who dies is not the person stuck in the time loop. The person who's trying to, like, stop their death is the person mm. who's stuck in a time loop. Um, so this one shook it up a little by putting you in her perspective, which is fun and also, you know, is dealing her psychic damage on a daily um but like her, her her not just learning to be a better person but her also like in many ways by having the same day over and over being pushed to confront her like grief and like the inner reasoning for why she's been horrible to people and withdrawing from yeah. everyone and not wanting to form relationships at all in any capacity like that's what's really beautiful about these movies no, I I mean, I was telling the girls earlier, I like c cried all day watching these two movies back and forth because I lost my mom six years ago. And this is like a really like complex, well done portrayal of of grief, like just seeing her like lose her mom at a similar age that I did too, like uh, earlier than me, obviously, but like, um, it, it just was so well done because like, it really does like bring out the worst in you sometimes unfortunately because it's just your whole world is rocked and she was also like best friends with him her mom it seems mm -hmm. and I had a very similar relationship with my mom and so I just you know felt very seen by the movie because like it it deals with so many things that you would want having lost someone especially the second one the second one like rocked my fucking socks today I'd seen it before the but, second um, one so... when I was in the theater and I saw that and I realized what they were doing the emotions that I experienced oh mm. just constant crying just constant crying even in the first one I was crying too just because yeah. of mostly like the sweetness of of some of the choices she makes about carter as well and mm -hmm. her selflessness like there's that moment when she like can survive to the next day but she kills herself because carter is dead and she was mm -hmm. like i can't let this be the one that sticks you know it yeah. just sh she becomes a selfless person she like has to face her grief and move through it to become like a person instead of just someone who like is like you know bites at whatever comes near her as a defense mechanism so i don't know i just it's a really smart movie it's a silly it's so silly but there's it's a so lot silly. of really fucking smart things going on underneath the surface and i love a movie that you can laugh at and cry at and be a little ooh, i'm scared like it's really the full spectrum of emotions yeah slay yeah. who wrote this <laughs> um i think the director got worked on some Dale. of the writing christopher landon but he yeah that guy's the writer got lobdell and christopher landon slay just saying yeah they yeah i mean they did a beautiful job but i mean i think the the part about that that i love so much is like you know clearly her dad is still in the picture that's who she's avoiding that's who she like explicitly does not want to connect with and like we get glimpses of what her normal relationship with her dad is like in the second one um but clearly that's not the parent that she's like really close with and like mm -hmm. who's not really making her feel actively loved and cared for regularly like when her mom is out of the picture it's clear that with her dad they're both kind of just treading water 
Um, yeah, they have that moment where he's like, how's your classes? How How's whatever? Yeah. She's like, can we stop with the small talk? Like, they keep things to, like, small fries when they mm-hmm. talk usually. Yeah, small even fries. when they are connecting, they're not connecting. Um, and so it's, like, very clear that her mom was the person in her life who made her feel so loved and cared for. Um, and that now that she doesn't have her mom, she doesn't have a person who makes her feel that way until Carter comes along. And in this moment, like she's like she says to the other people in the sequel, she's known them for weeks, but they've only known her for one day. And mm-hmm. that's how it is with Carter in the first movie and the original. It's like, yes, her feelings are building and growing for him over time, but he still only knows her since that morning each time. And he's still doing everything he can to like, help protect her and be a hero for her and be willing to like put his life on the line for her (laughs) and that yeah that's like what gives her that feeling of like someone wants to look out for me and make sure that I'm okay obviously it's not the same as having your mom who's your best friend in your life but to again find someone who wants to be a person who cares for you is like obviously very meaningful always but you can see how much it is for her especially when all the other people in her life are like Lori who's trying to kill her um mm-hmm. and Danielle Tim, they have a horrible who, relationship yeah, D- Danielle who's a bitch who's the biggest cut in the world um they're literally wants best to go on friends, dates with though. her he's also gay so like how no. it's not gonna be you know um he's wonderful love is love as she says to him um yeah. but you know it's just like she doesn't have any other connections to reach out and cling on to until Carter comes into her life and um I I don't know it's just it's so beautiful to see her find that and realize how much it means to her and realize how much she values it um Mm -hmm. and what she'll do to get it where it's like I will jump off this bell tower I don't know that I'm gonna get a second chance again tomorrow but I know that I can't stay in this one right now because it is untenable to have had that and to lose it so immediately and yeah. try and go forward from here. It just, oh, it's, it, yeah, it's gut wrenching. Oh, it's just so well done. I mean, can we just please have more of exactly this? There's a specific subgenre. It is horror comedy but it's also a rom-com as well i right? want the horror <laughs> rom-com all the time lisa fucking frankenstein it's a chick flick, warm okay? bodies <laughs> happy death day and happy death day to you just to name a few let's freaky do freaky is also in there freaky yeah oh i mean God, freaky's I was... explicitly like in this universe it's the same universe i was uh wa- i've been watching bad monkey which is vince vaughn's new show um and it's delightful if you're interested in that but it's made me think about freaky all the time and how like i really want freaky's that great it had I done freaky more and that we should cover it sometime it it didn't really get the the glow that it should have because it came out during it was still the pandemic right when that came out yeah i think yeah. honestly it may have been 2020 it could have been 2021 but it might have been 2020 pandemic and also yeah. it's also got what's her fucking name from abigail and Newton. from lisa mm-hmm. Catherine newton yes um and she's fantastic in it she's and when Vince so Vaughn fantastic. is her as a murderer she looks so slay and she has like this cunty red leather jacket she wears love it yeah such, I did that for Halloween one year such a good movie we should put that on the schedule for next year or something because it's so good and totally in conversation with this I, I I feel that for sure so anyway this is my plea for more horror rom comedies okay let's do it uh-huh. more, I want more rom-com. horror chick flicks okay <laughs> Honestly, this this movie and its sequel and Freaky were some of the movies that made me go, Blumhouse is it. Blumhouse fucking knows what they're doing. But then Blumhouse did one bazillion movies. And then I was like, oh, okay, never mind. Um, they're they're they've got some slaves, but they're not uniquely incredibly amazing smash it out of the park every time. There's studio yeah, just I think like any other studio. Gotten so much like they've gotten so successful now that they can like release more things and then they're you know yeah they're not all it can't all be this sometimes you get night swim 
sometimes you get oh, afraid, yeah. <laughs> which I haven't Look, seen. Look, Night Swim was also, it didn't have the romance, so you're so right. It was like a yeah. horror about grief, but not quite as poignant, maybe. <laughs> it doesn't have that really? comedy aspect that was intentional in a way. It had one or two funny lines. <laughs> But yeah, I just it's 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 so smart. It's so fun. You just don't expect it. It sneaks up on you how how smart it is. And it also has some fucking slay kills in it too. Like the kills are so fun and there's some great montage work done in well, this movie too. Well, the Again, it has mask, a great the mask. <laughs> the mask is so funny. The mask okay, is so, the mask funny. Is so funny. The yeah, baby I... babies. Great, great school name. Chelsea, I need you to get on Mask Talk uh, okay. with the uh, this mask. I'm scared. <laughs> what on? happens on Mask Talk? I don't have TikTok. You know this. It's oh, where sorry. the butch lesbians go. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> it's for, but, no, it's, it's for masks. Um... <laughs> it's like, okay. they, they'll, it's like, it's like mask. Picture like scream mask and like sexy abs. Oh, 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 I've actually seen some of this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I, I want Chelsea to do the butch version of it with the baby mask. Mm, I'm doing it right now. You can't tell. <laughs> you're looking no, so your hair isn't butch, butch enough Chelsea. in this hair. <laughs> <I mean. laughs> so fucking But no, funny. I fucking love You're not the in a baby. muscle tank. Sorry. I where's the butch? I uh, let me change later. Um <laughs> anyway. <laughs> But yeah, the baby is such a slay idea, such a slay concept. Apparently, um, one of the reasons he wanted to do, Christopher Lanton, the director, wanted to do the baby mask is because he was having a baby soon. Um, he and wanted so to really like, traumatize himself. The idea, right? Yeah, the idea of being a bad parent and like blah, blah, blah. That was like very much part of the zeitgeist for him. Um, but I also think it's interesting. They had a legal battle about this mask because the um, NBA team, the New Orleans Pelicans, their mascot, and I have not looked this up to see what it looks I'm like, it but their mascot is the, do you know what a king cake is? Yeah, of course I know what a king cake is. I know you know what a king cake is. Yeah, you know I know Monica? what a king cake is. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So if anybody doesn't know. Um, in New Orleans, they, for Mardi Gras especially, um, but they'll do cakes and then there's a little baby, a little plastic baby hiding in it. And that's the king cake baby. And it's like lucky to get that in your piece. Yeah. Um, you get the baby. Also, you got good luck. Don't want to swallow it too. Cause they can no, also no, be don't want to swallow the baby. Oh that's my God, bad. Wait. For, that's bad for you. You could choke. This could be from a king. No, cake. that might be a king cake. Yeah, baby. probably. Yeah. I think this is a king cake baby. You, so you can see reference. how it would be easy to swallow, but you shouldn't. You shouldn't swallow yeah. it. No, I if mean you should swallow about, plastic. Yeah. Generally Just speaking, a that's a good rule. Um, but the we New Orleans Pelican NBA team, their mascot is a king cake baby. Um, and so this movie, it doesn't like necessarily take place in Louisiana. They don't explicitly say where they are, but they filmed a lot in Louisiana. It was like they filmed at Loyola University in Louisiana and at UCLA in Westwood in Los Angeles. Um, and those were like the oh. two main. Is it scary? Oh, it's <laughs> horrific. Oh, my God. That was not. Awesome. Oh, my God. The Pelicans. Can't oh, my God. Oh, my God. That. Oh, my God. Yeah. Yeah, that is kind of scary. Ah! And then, so you can see why they would see a baby mascot in a horror movie and be like, you're jacking oh. our swag? How dare oh. you? Um, so they did so sue and that, that lawsuit was settled. Um, but That's so it's actually, horrifying. everybody's like, a baby mascot. Guess what? An NBA team also has a baby mascot. So It doesn't gonna... look like this baby. I'll tell you that. It no, looks way honestly, this baby, that, this baby is kind of cuter. You know what I mean? Which is hard to, but it is kind of cute. No, it's way cuter than this one. This one, I I have to click away. I was frozen. <laughs> I couldn't click away. And I just, wow, I feel really unsettled. Don't worry. We'll put a link to that in the show notes. Yeah, so you two uh, very can important. feel horrible. Axios in January <laughs> called it the NBA's creepiest mascot. So I would that's say yes. Because yeah. I just want to say right now that they're called the Pelicans and Pelicans are fucking cool and they could have been, been a Pelican. They could have just been I a Pelican. I love that they picked something really special and local to New Orleans. So. I do love that. I do love that. I wish it didn't look like that though. Yeah. That's mean to baby Jesus. 
yeah. it's supposed to be like a baby Jesus thing. I thought maybe, yeah, the king is Jesus. No. Well, anyway, back to the Mayfield <laughs> baby. Um, <laughs> it is such a fun, fascinating, funny, scary mask to have for your killer. You know what I mean? And it the feels guy like a scream who, reference too. It is. It's because, a scream reference in many ways. Um, because it's like a generic mask that anyone could have, so it makes it hard to yeah. track. Uh huh. But also, um, the Bayfield University baby killer costume was designed by Tony Gardner, who also designed the ghost face mask, the horror what icon of the scream oh. films, which is a reworked version of the father's death Halloween costume. So it's like death, new year, baby, um, you know, it all kind of is a full circle thing. But yeah, the same guy who worked on the ghost face mask worked on this mask. Um, Another reference to like horror and just references to other media in general. I don't know if this is explicitly true, but came to mind this time around. I feel like Tombs, the way that he looks and his name are an X-Files reference. Mm. Um, because there is a serial killer character in, um, season one called Tombs, spelled differently, T-O-O-M-S, and he's, like, this weird slimy guy who, like, eats oh. out your liver. It's disgusting. He he's eats so out scary. your liver. Yeah, he eats out your liver. It's very sexual. He no, it's, I, it, I hope it's not. I don't know. Um, but yeah, he, like, eats livers and then he goes into hibernation. Very slay of him. But also, I think it's a reference to Beyond the Sea because that's another X Files episode. Um, because okay. there is a character played by oh, what's his name? Come on, Monica. Oh, he plays Chucky, the guy who plays Chucky, Charles Lee Ray. No, that's the character's name. That's the character's name. I know uh, who you're talking he, about, though. I've got. I did a fan name. cam for him. When yeah, we you did, did child's a fan play. Cam for him. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. John Mickey Ray. After. No, that's again, I'm back to Charles Lee Ray. Um, <laughs> Brad Dorif. Brad Dorif, that's it. Brad Dorif. He's been everywhere in my life lately. So Brad Dorif plays this character whose name is Luther oh, Lee Boggs. actually, now I immediately can see the visual reference. Mm. He looks a lot like uh, Tombs, the guy who plays Tombs in, in Happy mm. Death Day. And he um, also, it was a killer of uh there's like college students that were okay in that episode as well that were at risk i'm not sure if he was a serial killer of college students because it's been a second since i watched that that episode but yeah anyway i just felt like it was an x-files reference there which i loved we love to see that we got buffy last week we got x-file this week two of my favorite shows wow feeling blessed thanks oh my chelsea god it's almost like me. chelsea birthday week is all about you wow uh, well i'm sorry that you're making choices that benefit me i'm thanking you right now no i'm sharing <laughs> thank you so much for sharing the love on your day of your birth That's you're welcome you. um i'm a giver what can i say but <laughs> yeah i mean tombs is just a scary guy also and his name tombs is like being in a tomb in a grave so that's for sure core naming as well yeah. um but images thought, of death <laughs> whoa that's whoa. so crazy that I, is I nuts. that's so smart i can't believe anybody ever thought whoa. of that a um, killer conjuring death imagery <laughs> that's wild um something else i thought about the baby this time around is also um the I don't know. Maybe this is not nice to say. I think this is a neutral statement. The dad looks kind of like the baby mask. Um, a little bit. A little bit. I feel yeah. like I can see that. <laughs> it, he looks a little bit like the baby mask. And so it does kind of feel thematic of like that's the thing that's chasing her that she's hiding and running from similar to how Ooh. she's like running and hiding from her dad it's kind of like how we were saying I on that. i saw the tv glow last episode that like the dad fred durst he kind of was like the villain in the pink opaque and so it's like that Mr. same Melancholy. thing yeah and like the captain hook mr darling peter pan thing where like the same actor plays both so that you kind of have that like same thing going on um totally. but i thought that that was um I, I was it intentional i don't know but these movies are very smart so i'm willing to 
believe they said, can we find a dad that looks a little bit like the baby mask? Um, yeah. Also, to switch gears a little bit, I forgot <laughs> about the fucking um, uh, affair aspect of this movie as well. Yeah. That yeah. The plot where about Tree that. is having an affair with Gregory, the, her, I don't know, science fucking professor. advanced bio teacher advanced bio teacher they don't reveal what uh, class it is until the sequel but i took notes <laughs> I, but, uh, he, uh, Chucky knows. I he's just yeah. like <laughs> medical man doctor he's a doctor that's all he's that a doctor, i know and he teaches the class and she's in the class so she's a woman in stem why is she taking that class maybe just because she's sleeping with him we don't know no one knows okay. but we don't know. something i thought about because i didn't remember what happened in the second one when i watched the first mm -hmm. one i know i knew broad strokes that's it yeah but um gregory gregory butler's uh the actor charles At atkin atkin not sure how to say it that man looks like he needs to be a villain and i know that yeah. he's already like a villainous character because he's having an affair and he's like he's a bitch affair because he's, he's, he's like a bitch, oh, but... it's so classic that you would fall in love with me i'm an older man and she's like i'm not in love with you and he's like <laughs> like he, that makes him so turned on for some reason he's um, so fucking gross and then there's that jump scare at one point in the movie too when like carter comes in to check on on tree when she's in the hospital because mm -hmm. all of her wounds have come to haunt they her and into, the yeah. lights go off and it comes back on it's like jump scare there's Gregory um there's and I was Gregory. like he is so sinister looking like I he he needs to have done something bad beyond yeah. this and then we get the sequel so there yeah. there it was I think they set also, that up they were thinking about it from from moment one the well, sequel I, I, I think. think in the first one also very possibly it was meant to be like misdirection you know what I mean like they were making yeah. him creepy so that you might think that he's the killer no, before totally... you find out who the killer is um but he is just a bitch um but yeah I mean the thing with him being the killer in the sequel is actually and I didn't know that this until this time around reading IMDb trivia but the um, ending of the first movie was not the original ending. The original ending that they were going with was that, like, she solves the original um, time loop of Lori killing her over and over. Um, but then instead, at the end, she gets, like, stuck in another time loop with like stephanie the wife killing her gregory's wife mm -hmm. um but audiences really fucking hated that that she yeah, doesn't no, get to break that. free of the time loop and, and i think like it works die. for a sequel you know what i mean but like within one contained story and film to be like and there's no end and she's doomed forever is very like okay so there's no point in personal growth and there's no yeah, reason they, to they ever get all any that better really and yeah there's no reward and there's no point to have watched this movie um so that was a mistake and they fixed it don't worry um but yeah that was also like part of the original script you know what I mean so I'm sure some of that was like artifacts left behind as well mm. but in the original movie or one of the original endings at least it was like gregory and lori had teamed up to kill tree so like the sinister nature of him is is baked in for sure 100 percent, yeah um also just wanted to say that i think it's like kind of shocking that tree is such a like capital c cunt um and he <laughs> has so many fucking friends that is a very big surprise party there are so many people at that surprise party for well, her. And so is it better to be feared or loved? There you go. They're so scared that, what they a came classic to her party. That we've a been classic asking quandary. Should that be our party question, reason. actually? That <laughs> said, be feared or loved? <laughs> these great. people go to celebrate Tree's birthday because they're all such good close friends with her? Or did they go to a party because there was a party? Party. Because it is college. Because it's college and they love to throw parties. They had party. to be there also, at a certain time that was before 9 p.m. and they're college students. That is impossible unless they are cared enough. <laughs> well, but also um, don't forget that Danielle is the one throwing this party. So I am absolutely sure she put the fear of God into everybody. 
again, we ask, is it better to be feared? <laughs> is it is it better or is it um more effective? I think showing up to a party, you know, maybe it's better to be feared because the stakes are low. Um, but Carter's not going to sacrifice himself for um tombs. You know what I mean? So he's going to sacrifice himself for yeah. somebody he loves. So is it better to be feared or loved? I guess it depends on the circumstances. That's the 100%. real answer to the question. I think we solved this 100%. great philosophical debate right here really, on this podcast. Wow. Um, we just solved the it. Thank you, Chelsea. On your depends. birthday, no less. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so you guys can quote us in future philosophy texts. Um, yeah, you can put that in your um, little citations on your essay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it is – that the whole beginning of the the movie is incredible uh where she's showing up to the surprise she doesn't even make it to the surprise party in the first round you yeah know what I mean? she gets killed uh-huh. in the tunnel with like the very um creepy scary Fucking little dramatic ceramic like, music box thing. yeah what that i think is so hilarious interesting is she wakes up in carter's bed she makes her way across campus she goes home Lori immediately is like here's a poison cupcake for you and she's like no I don't want this I hate this actually and um fuck off basically is the vibe um and I think it's like there's I, I put it in my notes there's like one moment where um I think Lori was like yeah I'm gonna fucking kill you um oh it's actually it's it's later it's later at the hospital um because I think, you know, Poison Cupcake, it's kind of low stakes. It's kind of hands off. You know what I mean? It's like, this fucking bitch, I'm going to put poison in her cupcake. And um, it's going to handle itself. And I don't have to fucking worry about it. And she didn't eat the cupcake. Like, you know what I mean? Is she so committed to killing her this day? I don't know. Um, Until she's working she her. Is. Well, I don't know that she was necessarily. Until she goes to her shift at the hospital where she's covering for Jen, who has the flu, she's doing double shift. And she realizes this opportunity that she has when Toombs comes in. It presents this opportunity to do a hands-on slasher killer and have someone to blame, which she didn't have before that moment. And also they have that confrontation where... um, Lori realizes that she's there for Gregory and is like, I think there are probably some serious consequences. I know what you're doing here, Tree. And um, doing this and keep going down this road is probably going to have serious consequences. Um, that are me killing you. <laughs> she's like, maybe it's none of my business. Yeah. And then Tree is basically like, yeah, it is none of your fucking business. And that's when Lori is like, um, and I'll strangle you to death if I have to. And I will smash a bong and stab you in the face if I have to. And I will drown you in a fountain if I have to. And I, you know what I mean? Like, that's the moment where the resolve really, like, gets her, I think. It's like, she had well, yeah, poison you could cupcake. See. She had a plan. Her plan was foiled so quickly. I don't, she might have tried again a different day. You know what I mean? Um, Or I think she was, like, kind of, she liked her poison thing. Um. But then she realized she had an opportunity and Tree was being bitchy enough to her that she was like, and I have the rage in me in this moment. Yeah. Lori no, had a plan, okay? And then she had 800 backup plans and she was committed. She's a girl who can think on her feet. She says each t- each different loop of the day, I will come up with a different approach. You know what I mean? She's not every single day going, stab you with a knife, shoot you with a gun. She's going... I am going to be so creative. I'm going to use whatever tools present themselves to me in each scenario. The bong one was the best. Which one? The bong one was the best. The bong, I yeah, the bong that. one I fucking love. Yeah, um, that is great. that the same time when what's his fucking name, Nick? Maybe yeah, is brought him to the fucking oh rave God. dojo. What did he call his room? <laughs> The pleasure dome or something the like pleasure that. Pleasure dome, and he's playing fucking dubstep and he's like, mm-hmm. drop. That is that's yes. like one of the that is so college parts of the movie. <laughs> I that is love so, it. That is so college. That guy looks a lot like Chase Crawford too in a mm. freaky way. Those crystal blue eyes. He's <laughs> such, such a fucking tool bag. Like the frat boy. Tool I love bag. Nick. <laughs> 
he's such a douche. Everybody he's in this movie. That's what douche. I'm saying. You know, I don't think they all love Tree. I think that they're all friends by like circumstance and um Greek life. He's, uh, yeah, it's yeah. just like they're all in the same social circle and everyone's kind of bitchy country. And, all fucking each and other. this is how they all treat each other. And um Except for, like, there's two nice girls in this sorority, and one is Becky, who catches stray after stray after stray all movie fucking long. Poor Becky! Um, <laughs> and and the, the, other... the Asian girl, who I don't even know if she gets a name in this movie, who's, yeah, like, sitting, on the sitting out with the cat ear headphones. Yeah, she, she's, she's so, so cute. cute. Um, and she just like, has atrocities happen in front of her sometimes. But sometimes she just gets, like, a little wave and a pass by. Um, but, but poor fucking Becky, Becky, poor Becky, I love Becky. I'm so sad that Becky is not in the sequel because we need justice for Becky. Um, maybe we'll get it in the third movie, you know, who, who knows what the third, we'll get to the third movie in time. Um, but you're so convinced there's going to be a third movie. Do you have, I am convinced intel? there's going to be a third movie. Well, they've talked about it in the press, like after the second movie came out, um, as anybody who's watched to the end of the second movie knows, there is a post credit scene that hints at a, the, a plot of a third movie. I don't know if that would be the plot of the third movie, but like the cast and crew have talked about a third movie earlier this year this year even they talked about how they still want to do a third movie but like Blumhouse and Universal has to get like all their ducks in a row oh wow um, I would have so thought that the, the that they would have moved the on station, you know yeah I definitely thought that because the first one came out in 2017 and the second one came out in 2019 and now it is 2024 um but I'll link the article that I was reading earlier but Jessica Rothy said um I it might oh it was while she was promoting her new film Boy Kills World um she I want to see that so bad well you can soon oh, perhaps Star, Star. or is it our, I don't know anyway it came out um, la- uh, earlier this year or last year okay um but she said that director Chris Landon has the whole thing figured out they just need Blumhouse and Universal to get their ducks in a row um and that it would be the third and final chapter, um, but also that they've got wiggle room with it because the plan essentially, um, the first two, Landon at some point in 2020, October 2020, told Empire um, that the tentative title of the third film is Happy Death Day to Us, um, which is not as slay as Happy Death Day to You, but you know maybe he'll come up with something mm-hmm. good by the time it rolls around. Um, but he said, we're not up against a really difficult clock right now. The other movies were hard because they were set in the exact same day. So everybody had to look the same and be the same, but the Mm -hmm. pressure is off with the third one, especially if they go the, like, I don't know, maybe if they went the Danielle route, they would have to be sort of tied to a similar timeline. You know what I mean? But Mm -hmm. For sure, it can just be, like, some theoretical point in the future. It doesn't have to be so back-to-back in the way that these two are, which is what makes them a perfect pair. But I believe in the power of a trilogy. Um, Charmed says the power of three, et cetera. This podcast said the power of three. Excuse you. This, one, two, three. Yeah. Three beautiful idiots. Yeah. Good one, Chelsea. When did yeah. Marvel start doing the movies? start doing the multiverse of madness shit not i'm not talking about doctor strange in in particular i just mean when did like multiple universes start being a thing because in the comic books well obviously in the comic books i'm talking about the movies Mm. i I Um, understand that they're based on comic books because but because like this was early this was early in the multiverse this was early but those movies i think also started multiverse of madness is different you know what i mean but i think that they sort of started to touch on it earlier with like avengers end game and um when did what's his name thoros is that right thor or no oh 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 thanos thanos endgame came out in 2019 so they're right on the money right there right at the height mm. at the peak of the multiverse actually not the peak i think i would say the beginning i think we're past the peak of the multiverse i feel like we've it's been played out at this point yeah. but this felt like a well done way of do of of explaining it all 
Um, sort of. They kind of do a lot of don't worry about it. Um, and they they contradict a lot of their own rules, which works in the sense of if you've seen Everything Everywhere All at Once, which is one of my other very favorite movies, but it's not a horror I movie, but movie. I will shoehorn it in for a fifth Tuesday at some point because I yeah. think it is so unbelievably slay. Um, but that movie does such an interesting thing of talking about how a single different decision branches you off into a different universe. You know what I mean? So there can be infinity universes that are like almost this one, very close, very similar to this one, but slightly different, which is what they really play with in the Happy Death Day to You sequel of like how how many things on the quad can be the same. Um fraternity guy falling over people making out sprinklers go on you know what i mean Mm -hmm. tim comes out to confront her but then it's like slight things are are different um when tree screams in his face when she's mad you're gay you're gay yeah so (laughs) fucking funny almost peed laughing that was so it's so good (laughs) amazing Um, queer representation in the film I would incredible, say multiple incredible options for that. Uh, <laughs> Literally, love is love, and we got that in the dialogue. <laughs> Literally, um, so that they said the thing. They Tim said the goddamn thing. They said the thing. Yeah, they said the thing. Um, but you know, so they they are able to be like, yeah, in the beginning of Happy Death Day to you, there's two Ryans, and one Ryan decides he has to attack the other Ryan because otherwise imminent danger, and I believe that Ryan would think that, and I believe that Ryan would jump immediately to murder other Ryan. That is within line with his character, 100%. I think. Um, And it's also in line with his character that when we jump to a slightly different nearby universe that ryan would be like um no there's definitely not a second tree here you don't even have to worry about that that's really unlikely even though she literally just told him that that had happened in the original universe that there was two of him he's like no it's really hard to create a holographic universe and it's like well you already did once bitch so like i don't know why you're completely dismissing this anyway um they just kind of play around with the rules a little bit and part of it is because the rules are a little different circumstances are a little different there's infinity universes you know what i mean so it's like in the first universe that we meet in happy death day and in the beginning of happy death day to you they don't need to figure out the algorithm really sissy is already working um working so well in fact that it's going off on its own which is perhaps to say that it's not working but they don't need to like solve any algorithms or anything like that and then in the other slightly different universe it's like he's less far along they don't know exactly how to get it to work they have to like figure it out and that's like part of the plot of that movie um but i don't know i think it's i think it's interesting and they kind of go like whatever what do you think? This is one of my discussion discussion questions that I wrote down. Um, what do you think about the sequel coming in with like an answer for why the time loop was happening? Like, did you need an explanation? Did you want an explanation? Um, did you think that there was like value in having that? I want to hear your perspectives, but then I also have thoughts. I think that it was a fun way to do a sequel and not just do the same thing over again. Because, yeah. like, we were discussing our schedule for, like, later on this month, and we were, like, thinking about doing something that covers some of the similar properties of this movie. And it's just, like, I don't want to see, like, the same thing again and again and again and again and again. It's hard to talk about, like, we had with our, our OG take on, on this <laughs> movie and it's hard to watch the same thing over and over and over and over again it's like you can make it funny but like I love that they gave a new angle and I also thought it was really smart because they obviously had planned this at least in some regard since the first movie because there were those unexplained power outages the rolling blackouts it didn't Mm -hmm. it didn't feel like a shoehorn thing to me it didn't feel like even though they did a good job and I know what you did last summer it was didn't didn't feel like oh and you've been having those prolific dreams you know what I mean and just like retconning the end real real quick you know it's not like a fast and furious retcon where they're like no he didn't die he's been alive here's the scene where he didn't die like it made sense and it was seamless and 
I thought that it was fun how they like faked you out at the beginning, having it be Ryan. And you're like, oh my God, it's going to be Ryan's story now. And then I, again, they fake you out because they're like, fuck, she's stuck in that day again, again. Like, I'm going to kill myself mm-hmm. if I have to do this movie all over okay. again. But then the it's the reveal. Danielle's but, but it's not different. there being like, you but sneaky it... biatch. Something's changed. Yeah. That, <laughs> no, no, that no. was like, the so Danielle strange, Carter you know romance it? reveal. Ugh, Hated it. It's so no, I am obsessed with it. It's Hated it. so fucking funny. That's like the worst pot, like the worst possible <laughs> thing to torture tree too. So it was perfect, but it's it was so terrible. Funny. I love like, Danielle so much in the sequel. <laughs> she's so alternate she's universe so funny. Danielle. she is she's, also still terrible but she's less she's terrible um, a little bit less and terrible it's, and it's a slut <laughs> just a, a hair a hair's breath but i just think it's so interesting that it's such a yeah. slight change but it has such like insane ramifications and again they did even a more poignantly emotional job and like well done job of like showing grief and and mm-hmm. that other aspect of it it was just like so so heart-wrenching yeah how, how they took it so i i love the sequel i don't think it's nearly as much of a horror movie necessarily mm-hmm. but this but like that's fine i don't i don't care about that at all i thought it was yeah. a, a great way to do it instead of just being like here's the same thing again to a different dude yeah or whatever you, you don't want to watch her keep getting slashed over and over again like it's so no. fun in the first movie but you saw the first movie already and like yeah i just watched it five minutes ago yeah and I'm watching the second one five minutes later. <laughs> I I mean the explanation, like you said, the rolling blackouts in the first movie hints that there was something planned. Um, Chris Landon said that there are Easter eggs in the first movie pointing to the cause. I have to think that the the blackouts are what he means. He said one is really big, but he didn't clarify what he meant by that. So I don't know what else he's talking about if there are other hints that we are supposed to catch um Maybe there's some stuff in the in brian and and carter's room that like is like his oh, notes or something maybe. like that yeah. maybe there's something visual. well i mean i think the the fact know, that she's like staying in his room even though she's not the one sleeping in his bed the fact that she's staying in his room presumably maybe even in the room by 1201 um is like an interesting potential reason for why her although I think you could argue potentially that like I don't know maybe it's not only her I don't know she's got like a meta awareness that other people don't have um I do love when she's trying to say to Danielle that she's having deja vu and Danielle's like oh that means something somebody's thinking about you while they're masturbating I've got it five times a day um I love that line (laughs) so much I, you know, you watch the first movie and you're like, I don't really need an explanation for the time loop. It's the character journey that's so compelling. Um, And then I think it's really interesting in the sequel that they give you an answer um, and that she now has to wrestle with, like, I thought there was a cosmic reason that I had to go through that to, like, reckon with my grief and accept that I wasn't moving forward after my mom's death and accept that I wasn't living the life that she would want me to Mm -hmm. and that I have to like even after my mom is gone like continue to make her proud and like continue my relationship with her in that capacity even though she's not here um I think that is like a beautiful message and I also think it's really interesting for them to go and it wasn't that I'm glad you learned that but it wasn't that and what what is there still for you to learn um obviously yeah, that, that moment with Carter when he, he's like oh well it still like matters that mm-hmm. it happened like even yeah. if it wasn't like god being like you need to learn a lesson tree <laughs> geldman you yeah. know I, I like it better that it wasn't that you know mm-hmm. yes yeah but i think um what's really i mean it's a good device to bring in more characters too because i'm sure uh, i okay remember in um scream 2 where um maureen and her boyfriend steve or what somebody stevens or whatever his name is they're like waiting in line and they're talking about oh you know stab is just about white 
kids getting killed blah 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 like what does that have to do with us and so they have that like sort of meta conversation about how the first screen movie was only about white people and so they're like and now we're making the sequel more diverse um i think there probably was like a little bit of awareness of that with this movie too that in the first movie it's like all white characters except for becky who's catching strays and getting hit in the head with baseball bats and getting called fat and then like ryan who's just there to say fine vagina over and over again and then Lori, who is a psychotic killer um you know and they went ooh, interesting um and so in the sequel they were like okay we gotta we gotta pull more characters in to shake this up a little bit and so like the science project device was a really good device for how to keep those characters involved and relevant and part of the storyline um and Mm -hmm. also so much of the first movie is just tree trying to survive this horrific thing that is happening to her and like having a device that they can troubleshoot and turn on and turn off and use like adds some agency back into the storyline that I think is like much needed if you're going to do second trapped in time loop movie you know what I mean I just I love that she has to remember the algorithm like she Mm -hmm. has to like learn kind of some sciencey things like because she's kind of like she's not a dumbass necessarily but like she doesn't know a lot of advanced she doesn't get well she's coasting by because uh what's his fucking name gregory is giving her good grades i think she's coasting by not because she wasn't smart enough to do well but because she didn't give a shit but yeah no totally i'm not saying she's not smart, no i agree she's like kind of like out of the loop and it like yeah. doesn't know any references like she's never heard of groundhog's day she hasn't heard <laughs> she of, like, does any not watch of movies. movies she's, she's never she's watched a movie never in her seen fucking a movie. life she has no idea who marty <laughs> mcfly is she doesn't know, yeah, she doesn't know who Bill Murray is. <laughs> Again, Bill a crime. Murray is. Also want to say that Carter, love him even more because he is a horror guy. He has a Repo Man and a mm-hmm. They Live fucking poster up on his wall. Elite he loves incredible. movies. He loves movies. But love yeah, Carter. I think that it was cool to give her agency to like have to learn all this stuff and lock And make it like decisions brain. about it too. Also yeah. to be like, do I want to go back do I want to stay in this universe do I want when do I want to close the loop when am I ready to do that like it's really interesting to give her a physical tool that she can use as part of that decision making even if it doesn't always work one more connection to me on Chelsea's birthday um I also went (laughs) to UCLA with Sarah Yarkin who plays Andrea slash Dre Who's mm-hmm. the girl with the curly hair? Who's she's in the so cute. science group? She was very yeah, cute. so she's like one of those people in college where you like never met them, but you see them everywhere mm. you go, walking mm-hmm. across the campus. So I would just see her everywhere, and then I saw her on my TV screen, and I was like, "Holy shit!" Like, anyway, oh, you should watch that ghost I'm show. What's her the ghost again. show we love? School spirits. School spirits. Oh, my friend just started spirits. watching that and was talking about it with me literally yesterday. It's so good, and it's, it's the so second good. season did not really get good. canceled. It is still coming out. It's being it's in production right now. So get, get it got a second train. life. Once they put the that train. show on Netflix, Hell they yeah. said, "Oopsie, we hid it away on Paramount Plus, which nobody has or watches." Um, but that's where I watched it. That's where I watched yeah. it also. I but then it went it on Netflix, and um, other people then everybody also watched discovered it. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's lace. So Sarah Yarkin, she's really cute in it, and she's in the uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre movie that came out couple years ago that everyone fucking hated and they particularly came after her character but i thought her character was really funny and she did a really good job it was written to be annoying and i loved it (laughs) it was all of the fucking like like old old horse of of texas chainsaw massacre Mm. fans were like these millennials and like they're supposed to be fucking dumb (laughs) millennials yeah that's that's the the whole point babe that's the whole point but yeah, yeah no, I haven't I do... seen that, but I love her in this. She's great in this. She's she's so great in this. I I wish they I I remembered her having more to say. She's kind of doesn't have that much. Um, but I think those two characters do. I mean, they don't have a story arc at literally at all. You no, know what I mean? No. Um, but they are good comic relief at the very least, and I think they also really nail the delivery with a lot of their lines. The only one I don't like is Nom Nom. Um, but that is their to drive home the like time loop aspect of like oh specific things said in the same way S- yeah. something's going on is somebody thinking about me while masturbating um but 
I, I really just... like when he's oh, like, God, he did went... you dose my Yoohoo again? I thought that one was a great delivery. That was really, really funny. I love the Yoohoo, how it looked visually yeah. as it exploded in the explosion scene as well. But another like attention to detail thing that I just really was impressed with with the sequel is like how well and accurately they nailed making it look like the same day in the same yeah. movie. Like the set design. I mean, obviously it's their job to make it perfect, but like I could tell in the places, in some places where they didn't have the same extras because they didn't like look up the way they would. Like the couple, mm -hmm. I don't think the couple that's They're in like, on your the faces patio, <laughs> I don't think it's the same people because they like don't look up at all. And I'm like, okay, I they see. Got they, they, got, <laughs> they got that goth guy back. They got that goth guy back. They had to have it. And they had to have the global warming the green yeah, the girl. Yeah, the green yeah. girl. <laughs> yeah. Had Thank to, God. The, what would the movie be without her? A hundred percent. Poor. She's, she's even. She's even strays. there on Tuesday the nineteenth. You know what I mean. She has, she's out there every day because she she cares she about the environment. Yeah. You know who else is there both days, which I think is so interesting, but you know, is just a fun detail. The tuba and the guy yelling "shut up." That's on both Monday, September eighteenth, in the first movie, and Tuesday, September nineteenth, in the second movie. And I believe that those two characters do that every fucking day. I believe that they are going to do it on Wednesday the 20th as well and Practice Thursday the 21st, etc. With the yeah. tuba. <laughs> yeah. It's so funny. Oh, man. Also, I mean, just just to go back to me crying, mm -hmm. I just, I, how brilliant to have her have to make that choice, like to yeah. have her mom be alive in this other universe. Oh, it was Horrifying. just, oh my God. Horrifying. Horrifying. Oh. What like just a, such a a good idea because like yeah that's a huge part of the first movie but they, it's it's there's so much else going on and it's also mm -hmm. the love story with Carter which is so sweet and so beautiful and it's like a part of her story but it's not everything you know it's a part of her rehabilitation mm -hmm. that's the reason why she is such a bitch um but like she spat on an Uber driver that just was. I that about is that. She was a really I'm bad person. Yeah. <laughs> she was really bad. Yeah, that's a really I'm bad. About that. Her her score on Uber is zero. They don't pick her up anymore. Um, but yeah, just to have it be that choice, and also I think they did a good job of like reiterating like how much she loves Carter because she's had so much time with him now, like because she's lived the day a multitude of times you know and mm -hmm. we're we know that but like sometimes you're sometimes it's like oh why wouldn't you want to stay with your mom like of course of course you're gonna stay with your mom but I think the way that they unfolded the story yeah. and re releasing those little details being like okay yes that's your mom but it's not your mom. It's not the yeah. mom that you love. It's not the mom that you grew up with. It's her body, right? Not exactly, but whatever. It's her body. Um, they look the same, but they're the not same. the same. They look the same, but like so much of your relationship, yes, Sydney, so much of your relationship with a person is your shared experiences, your memories together. She's looking through the phone at that one point, and she's like, so weird. There's pictures of us together, but I don't remember any of these mm -hmm. moments. Like, just the like light horror of that, like yeah. just being like, oh, I've got her back. This is my mom. My mom is back. Everything I could have ever wanted has happened. Like this is the person that I love the most who's gone from my life and she's restored to me. But then it's like the slow, she releases her denial over the movie that like actually that's not, that's not her, you know, it's not, yeah. it's not well, exactly it's, right. Well, there's that, even if it was, where, yeah like the mom was talking me. about her birthday and she's I'm like yeah, two you had cinnamon two. buns last and year like, that and she said that wasn't me like I didn't yeah. do that yeah I mean yeah. I think they can't there connect is, in that same way because yeah like we said this universe is different you know what I mean like Danielle and Carter are dating that's one big difference obviously her mom is alive that's a huge fucking difference Becky um, doesn't exist Becky doesn't well but also she never goes to the house meeting so maybe Becky does exist but she's at house meeting that's which true. is where we primarily true. see her Fair. in the first film um but even if the only difference even if everything up to 
when her mom died in the original universe is exactly the same there are three years in there that has built and changed and grown their relationship and it's not going to be exactly like tree remembers it because it's functionally not the same anymore but also there's the implication that like there could have been a zillion differences in the years that she remembers like even the things that she did share as memories with her mom this mom might not have those memories this mom no, might have done probably things doesn't. differently and i think there's also the implication that they don't super deal with in the movie but they do mention it and like sort of small time address it but like she is potentially stealing this life from another version of herself out there and if she stays here Yes, she gets to stay with this mom who is not quite... It's almost like Coraline-ish, the other mother, you know what I mean? Yeah, Obviously, no, it's not that, that because it's sure. like other mother is evil. Um, But it's like this slightly like wrong, something's a little off. Um, But it's also like she's taking that away from a version of herself who didn't lose her mom. She's creating another version of herself who doesn't have their mother and like the responsibility for that I think would really weigh on her and is weighing on her a little bit but it's like so secondary to the immediacy of like Carter will die Carter's gonna die because he's always gonna try and be a hero and he's always gonna try and do the right thing and help people and even if you're not gonna go save Lori he's gonna try and go save Lori if he knows about it and like there's really I thought about this in my notes. One of my discussion questions was like, okay, she could stay in this alternate universe, not tell Carter that there's going to be a murderer at the hospital later killing people. Just like not tell him about that. Not and tell, tell him that Danielle is cheating on him. And yeah, then tell she her. has everything. Right. And then she could have everything. Like it's right there. But then this relationship that she has with Carter, that's like built on, trust and like responsibility to each other and like acting in good faith and like goodwill for each other even when you don't have responsibility like doing something kind for someone sacrificing things that you want or your literal life for someone just because maybe it's the right thing to do or because you might be able to help like that's what's so beautiful about their relationship. And so even though there is this like possibility where like she could have it all, like it would not be the beautiful relationship that she has with Carter. It would be like full of lies and things she would have to hide for the rest of her life. And like the trauma she could never share with him. And he would, you know what I mean? Like it, it would, it would not work. I just, I just, this quote from Harry Potter just popped into oh, my no. life. Okay. Like, drinking the blood of the unicorn can save you, even if you're on the brink of death, but it will be a half-life, a cursed life. <laughs> that's what popped into my I'm so sorry. I'm really sorry that you know that what? happened. But I really that's kind of what it is. I hear you. <laughs> it's like, it's on paper. She could get everything that she wants but it's not exactly right and like then you have to live the whole rest of your life with these little tiny things grating on you and also in my opinion can the space-time continuum 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 <laughs> be <laughs> healed if she's not in the right universe like how can it be fixed if people aren't in the right place like will that cause more issues i don't know how fucking that shit works no one does does it's not real maybe it is i don't know i'm not a scientist don't quote me you can but watch like, umbrella feel... academy if you want to answer those questions yeah i want to know what oh, happened I need to, to keep the watching tree that. of that universe yeah yeah i mean who knows where like, she is she go? You know? maybe she's yeah. stuck in a time loop somewhere else but she's not being murdered in that universe so it's like not great but not as bad as it could be you know what i mean like Maybe yeah, there's only one know. universe. I don't know. One thing I think that is so interesting about these movies, um, the way that the plot works in both of them, you know, you have to make, it, as always in life, as always in life, you are making decisions with limited information. And sometimes you just have to work with what you've got and it's fucking wrong. Um, but it's so interesting in the first one that the whole tombs part of the storyline becomes relevant because she sees it on the news and assumes that that must be the killer. That must be the killer. So I'll go to the hospital and have There's showdown a with him. Serial killer right there. That yeah. could be the serial killer who's killing me. 
And like, obviously that is part of Lori's plan is that people will jump to that conclusion. And so the fact that tree falls in that trap is like not particularly surprising, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But it is so interesting from like an outsider's perspective to be like, she literally that she didn't have to overcome that obstacle until she created it for herself. Um, because that was not who was killing her. It was Lori who was killing her. And obviously she doesn't know that, but like she introduces that into the storyline and then in the second one in the alternate universe she's like and i'm just gonna have to wait here for someone to come kill me every day girl in this universe you don't know this but literally nobody's trying to kill you you are killing yourself every day to reset the loop and i don't even know if you have to do that maybe if you just fell asleep it would reset we don't know but because you assume that there is a killer after you you're killing yourself instead and that's what is um hitting the reset button but the killer's not after her. The killer is after Lori. You know what I mean? Like, it's just so interesting to see the way yeah, that it influences that the plot because she's working with the information that she has, which is sometimes wrong and incomplete. This is a thought that is not a great thought, but okay. <laughs> uh, we were talking about earlier about how we love that she had more agency in the second film. And I think that goes to show with how she kills herself every day instead of being killed and like go ahead girl yeah i, I was watching your own hand one. love yeah i love those i'm sorry i was re-watching it the second one earlier today and my mom was in the room um and samar the guy was like you could just kill yourself and my mom was like oh my god What? and i was like look if someone is coming to kill you maybe killing yourself on your own terms is the better way to go and also it's just so funny to me because we're always like in horror movies i just fucking die which is yeah kind of what she's doing she, I, look she can just kill herself just kill herself she doesn't have to wait to be killed done done no scare no fear it's beautiful <laughs> <laughs> okay, I have two I have two discussion questions. Okay. Um, I guess we'll start with the one that's closest at hand. Which is your favorite way that she kills herself? And then after that, which is your favorite way that she died? Mm. I mean, My... I think oh, you go ahead. Drano. <laughs> <laughs> the man was it's so alarmed. Yeah. <laughs> That is a really bad way to die. She it chose some bad. really painful ones. Well, the wood chipper, I feel like you really, that is such a bold choice. You know what I mean? See, and I that's love a, the skydiving <laughs> one because, like, that's, the man yeah, was so confused. One, I think. Yeah. And it's like, did he even know she was there? But then, about to say, maybe he fuck knew she you was there. to Carter yeah. and Danielle. Right. And she right does it in, in a bikini just incredible. to be slay. Um, like, that's, I would do the pettiest shit. I would kill myself in front yes. of people that I hate all the time to that's traumatize CGI. them for five seconds. That was a reshoot adding that scene in. And they were absolutely so right to do it. And it oh, was so necessary. Funny. And it was great for marketing. They used that a lot in the marketing of this movie because I oh, saw. I saw this the sequel in theaters. Um, one of my best friends and I like randomly watched the first one one night together when we were just like, let's watch a scary movie. Um, and the the beginning gimmicks also just like with the studio logo, the Universal logo, I fucking love the way that they, they do the like loop on the first one. Um, and Happy Death Day, where for a second we really were like, oh, is our yeah. is this stream not working? Um, and then in the oh, second so one, it clever. like splits into the multiple ones. Um, I think that's fun. But um, we had watched the first one together, and we were so excited when we found out that they were making a sequel. And we went like opening weekend and sat in the theater and watched it, and it just it was immediately a slay. Um, but they the skydiving one was I feel like in all of the trailers. Um, and oh, cool. It just is such an it iconic harkens. moment. Her, like, the flipping them off as she's coming down. The way they react, like, Carter jumping up on the bench and Danielle grab it. Like, it's just such a perfect scene. It's so and beautiful. It's a, it's a great callback to the first movie, too, when she, like, is like, fuck it and walks naked through the quad. Yeah! I felt like a, a I call back the to naked that, in the quad scene. Super, yeah. super fun. Which Jessica I Rothy said was very empowering for her to do because um she'd never done something like that before and she said they did a really good job 
on set of making her feel like safe and protected because you know they're literally in fucking public in the daytime and she is fully naked even if you don't see her fully nude in the movie like she probably could have gotten away with wearing something if she wanted to but she did it fully naked and she said like all of the female crew members um before each take would like huddle her around huddle around her and like hold up their jackets to like help cover her until it was time to like film the take um and they would like hype her up and like cheer her on and she would like get it i don't know she said there there's a great um quote from her that was on imdb trivia where she was just saying that like it was very empowering for her as she it was a great like that. feminine experience um female awesomeness our words that she used i just felt such love and female awesomeness in that moment it's something where i could have a very long and successful career and never get to do that again so, so there were a lot of amazing moments filming this that's what she said so fun i love that i do and as we all know sometimes you have to be naked with your friends no it's so important. all the time you have to be naked with your friends all the time uh-huh. nudity time with your girls it's very yeah, important it's so important sometimes you go to the korean spa sometimes that's how chelsea and i bonded that's how we bonded we did yeah Naked in a hot tub, baby. We, we went and it's got important. in the naked pools. It's very important to be naked with your friends. It's as a born and bred nudist by heart. Mm-hmm. It's something that I love. It's um, rule number one of this podcast, actually. 100%. <laughs> but I also love the one, um, sorry to get back to the ways that she kills herself. I also love when she shoots the oxygen tank because I think that is just like, that's a fun run through where she's like fighting with the killer and she's just like, if I have to go, I am taking us both you fucking out. Yeah. You're, yeah. Um, I think that's a really fun one. And the ways I would want to kill myself, a lot of these I would not do. Um, I would not voluntarily dive into a wood chipper. That feels like the worst possible way. Yeah, that you one could seems kill miserable. Um, and you see her little feet kicking as she goes through it. Um, no, I would not want to. But do that's that another one. reference to Back to the Future, at least, because it's Biff's wood chipper or something like that. Biff's wood tree removal company wood chipper. So, but it's also tree removal, and her name tree is removal, tree removal removing tree. <laughs> yeah so funny that's actually though, really funny like, now i wouldn't want them to change anything because it's mm-hmm. also hilarious but this is where i feel like um the effects on her body parts kind of breaks down because yeah. like if she fucking explodes like how like it, and it's supposed to be affecting her like if she has the scar tissue from the stab in her tum tum uh, you know, like they yeah. show in the first movie or whatever, or a broken rib or whatever. It seems like she's like leaning over in pain, but then she explodes and then she gets cut up into tiny little pieces. Like it just like they kind of lose it a little bit. To- it doesn't totally gel. So, yeah, so I, you know me. I love to sus- suspend my disbelief, but that does like make it a little less airtight but whatever yeah you know it's obviously there's crazy shit going on here that's but beyond they said science we can't keep killing her she has to start killing herself and we want that to be fun um yeah so and we're gonna have get a fun little with, it. with it and i said and i'm on board no matter what you do i'll follow you anywhere a hundred percent a hundred percent that said of the ways that she does get killed in the original movie i also love the explosion there where it's like she thinks she's gotten away she thinks she, she's like so she's like i did it I fucking did it. and then she gets pulled over um but then even in that, that moment one. he's like are you drunk and she's like will you arrest me if i am you'll put me in a jail jail cell where i'll be safe and nobody can get me yep i'm drunk i'm high i'm on weed i'm on pills blah, 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 blah. like Take i'm on me every drug of anything you can think of um but then fucking baby face killer comes along and has the candle from the cupcake and like that. which is another clue um mm-hmm. although yeah, obviously so much of the marketing for the movie was just like birthday slasher and carter is also like oh it's your birthday that's why this day is the time loop and that's why it's significant so like mm-hmm. if it wasn't Lori, you would have just been like that's just part of the theme of the movie you know what i mean it would have been easy mm-hmm. to brush off but it is a hint um Love and that. it's very fun the way that she just like fucking takes the cop out and then the the gas is spurting and she's like and i don't even have to get you out of the back of this cop car to end you so that's one of my favorite ways she gets killed in the original i also love in the sequel when i mean this isn't a fun one this is like an emotionally moving one but i love like 
she's really struggling towards the end like choosing to stay here with her mom even though i think she at this point feels that it feels wrong you know mm -hmm. and like the pain of having to lose carter in that and then she go goes to mommy and daddy and's like let's get the hell out of dodge let's drive mm -hmm. away um and that moment when and, and we get this moment twice. You get this movement moment in the first movie where she hangs herself to save Carter's life. And you get this moment again where she sees on the TV that he went to be a hero and he was slain by tombs. And she drives herself into the, um, what is it, like electrical? The power plant. Power Which plant, is so yeah. Perfect. It's so smart. She is a woman in STEM and she is a genius uh -huh. because it's like, if she killed herself, maybe it would reset the loop, but we don't know for sure because the device is also just about to go off and maybe it would have yeah. closed the loop and they would have all just been fucking dead. So she needs to kill herself to reset the day and also stop the device from going off. So driving into the power plant, not only does she explode, but also she cuts the power out so the device cannot finish its its little job um and and just in the fucking nick of time too yeah. but i love that one that one is such a good dramatic scene it's really it's really amazing oh and also just give a little shine to the fucking dean dean roger bronson <laughs> he was so, so funny. fucking funny, he is funny. <laughs> i want to punch that man in the face <laughs> like he's so he obnoxious but so funny comes in <laughs> and ruins everything all the fucking time and then we He's get that just, fun okay. blind <laughs> danielle moment I, Emily I and love, that was vibes. the marble but i also love that he's just like watching cat whisperer um he the he way they cats. use reality tv in these movies is so funny because tree is watching teen mom too in the first yeah. movie and i don't know why they've pitched it down but they have because they're like show they show you the Teen Mom Two logo. It's very clearly Janelle talking. You know what I mean? But they mm -hmm. pitched it down for some reason. Um, but I just love that it keeps it keeps popping up. I'm sure in the third one when it is made and it will be made and I am manifesting that they'll be watching um, Traders. Maybe could be mm. could be a different reality. I don't know what what reality TV show would you want to see pop up? Maybe that's poll question. Who can say? Um, but. <laughs> The poll question is, would you rather be feared or loved? <laughs> I or also want to give to be feared or loved? a shout out to the creature from the Black Lagoon. Yeah, yes! I loved that. Yeah. There are so many good little horror Easter eggs in mm -hmm. here. Like, I loved talking the posters this time, like I said before. But it's it's so good. And I don't know. I think that they just nailed nailed the ending of this movie too like it's i don't know i just feel like these are perfect i totally agree with you chelsea yeah. they're really like perfectly tied up with well, little I love the end of the first one too the end of the first one is so good because it's like she really thinks she's beat the time loop you know what i mean she mm -hmm. stopped tombs she survived she made it to the end of the day they have this romantic moment where they're gonna share a cupcake and be in love and it's so like 16 candles which is a fun reference too because yeah. that's a movie about having a shitty birthday um and so it's like they're having this moment and then she wakes up and she's like i don't understand like what what like I, I fucking love when she has a breakdown in these movies because she's so good at it. And I love the camera yeah, work that they do to totally. show like how out of control she feels or how like legitimately like losing consciousness she is. Um, But I love the way that she like just goes home to her room because she can't fucking take it anymore. And then that's when she like puts the pieces together like, oh, I that's the only time I ate the cupcake and i died in my fucking sleep and i'm putting the pieces together Lori, you bitch um because i just love that showdown too and like i said you don't want it to be like an i'm killing you because of a man movie girdle cat fight but also it's very fun for them to acknowledge that in the film and try to be like you're killing me because of a guy and Lori's like that's not the only reason 
you're a dumb bitch too like <laughs> that part of the movie i was like can that be like our sound bite to lead into the dumb bitch bitch segment every time like that was so can we just good. create that dumb bitch too <laughs> like Seriously, can we just recreate just grab, it grab that sound bite you're killing have... me over a guy no he's a dumb bitch too <laughs> I, I love think... that line it's so much. I think it's so funny. I think it was also brilliant from a pacing perspective, too, because at this point in the movie, we relived the day so many times that if they had done it one more time after you thought that she had solved it finally, I think people would have been like frustrated as you also viewers, would jump it would in have a wood chipper. Been... Yeah. Exactly. It would have just been like, okay, we're gonna do this again. That's how I felt this time. I was like, don't tell me we're doing this again. But, like, then they're like, no, she's figured it out. Like, she, mm-hmm. like, and you get that release and that movement. And I'm like, okay, thank God. So they, they placed also, it then, perfectly. There's so much, there's so many good moments in that scene of, like, perfect line delivery. This is not that scene. But, like, when um Tree kills herself after Carter died saving her and she's like, I'm going to go I'm gonna jump off the bell tower so that I can save him and she's like putting her pants on in that scene and he's like oh you probably don't even remember her name and she's like you're Carter Carter like the way uh-huh. she says his name I fucking love um but in the showdown with Lori at the end of the first movie when she's like you've been killing me over and over this whole time you already killed me Lori doesn't know what the fuck she is talking about but Lori's just like and I guess I'm gonna have to do it, do again. it again. Like she's, I love that line. She's like, I don't know this time loop shit that you're talking about, <laughs> but if you're saying that I already killed you and that's what I'm trying to do here with this poison cupcake, yeah, I, I'll just do it again right now. Like if I have to be hands on right now, I fucking will be. Um, yeah, I know. I, also, I just yeah, think I it's such a fun it. fucking scene. I love when she shoved it in her mouth too, and she fucking freaks out. Like, mm-hmm. really puts <laughs> it in her mouth so funny but i again another thing with the sequel that i fucking love i love the like hair and and pain that tree has with with her character with Lori's character to be like so sad that in this world this yeah. person is the friend that she thought she was and she's going out of the, her way to save Lori's life even though this yeah. other Lori killed her and like that end scene when she's th- of them together at least when she's like, I just wish that things could have been different. Um, mm-hmm. It's moving. It's very, it it's, it's really so moving. sad. And, it, it, and again, it's so healing for anybody who couldn't get past the girl on girl over a man violence of the first 100%. one. 100%. Um, but also it's so fucking fun that in the second one, it opens. She realizes she's in a time loop back same day. Same, same day. Um, she's like, okay, first order of business. I have to go to my sorority house and kill Lori. Lori. Um, that's yeah. the first, I fucking love that immediately. She's like, first things first. That's thing number one. We got to go kill Lori. Um, and then she gets there and it's not the same. And she's like, okay, wait, now I'm a little thrown. Um, now I'm not What's so sure. I just, I love that, you know. She knows the answer in theory, at least to who's killing her this time around. And she's like, and I'm going straight to Lori and I'm going to. I I love that take charge attitude, girl. She's become an action star after the events of the first movie. You know what I mean? Um, and I also love that I, the reason right. that um, the relationship. The reason that Danielle isn't there is because she's fucking Nick. Mm-hmm. She's uh-huh. up hiding in her room. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it all makes sense. It all comes together. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I but love yeah, Danielle I- in the second one. Like, we barely talked on it, but to go back to the blind scene, it is just, I think, a very incredibly funny scene. Um, it was so funny. <laughs> we love a little slapstick. We literally, little, she I, slaps him with a stick. <laughs> literally, she slaps him with a stick. It's not usually my type of humor, um but it feels very Danielle and I love how helpful Danielle is trying to be and um I love that she's a theater girl in this universe Mm -hmm. and she's so fucking committed to the bit and she also just like again has some of the best line delivery in this movie um and I okay when he's like oh you must be French your hand smells like cheese which first of all did you see her outfit obviously she's French did you hear her little accent obviously, obviously she's French but that was she's a like, little I mean, so cheese. 
And then she's like, I am lactose interrupt, the way she says it, I love. Um, and then I love after when he's like, you're not blind. And he figures it out when she's like, babe, can you also get my sunglasses back? I just got those. Like, I just love her so much. So I love it. fucking good. It's just, it's just spectacular. Ugh. And then there I guess is but- an, there is an argument um, that I don't really buy into, but I did read on IMDb. And then when I was watching the movie, I tracked what they were talking about. At least there's an argument that that like final heist moment um, is actually a slightly different universe than the one that they've been in the rest of the film because the dean comes a day early to like unplug. Mm-hmm sissy um but i also think you know it's we we haven't said the name of the this movie but it's been in in the background but butterfly effect being what it is you know what i mean like little changes beget bigger changes sometimes so it's like they, they turned on the machine you know what i mean like it's not unreasonable for the dean to show up even if it is a day early from he has in past runs um he still has free will i hope He's, i don't yeah, know he still has free will let's not get and, into that philosophical um, it's, question yeah, it's, it's, it's Do a we all have, i think we've already had Thank that you. conversation actually free will versus predestination <laughs> let's go <laughs> I feel like let's, we've already had that that let's rehash let's, let's, um, attack, let's go <laughs> new fact but yeah i mean it's an interesting question that i i think no um but i think no, I think no. um <laughs> but yeah i mean the the hospital showdown in that universe is also interesting. I don't really care about Gregory or Stephanie or whatever. I'm, you know, yeah. if they want to be villains, that's I think fine. The Who cares? Lady that's who so Stephanie is hot, so I glad I'm glad she got to yeah. be hot with a gun. But it mm-hmm. was to the detriment of all of our little friends, so mm-hmm. that's not yeah. good. Yeah, yeah. And, and Gregory I mean, like, is ultimate bitch for killing her. Yeah, he yeah. forsaken her twice. And this wow. movie that is has been. still, it's that. like way less of a horror than the other one, in part just because they abandoned the baby face killer storyline for so much of this because she's killing herself instead of waiting to be killed. Although, again, we know he's he's not coming for her, um, but she doesn't know that. But like, it is still part of the framing, so they have to loop back to it at some point, and they have to like close that, they have to put that like book on end on that so I I think it's interesting and I think like her saving Lori it's not just like this beautiful moment for their friendship that I do love that they have um but it's also just like you know Carter's Carter's a hero and she's a hero and Gregory sucks and Lori Lori's gonna be okay um but I don't know I I like the screwdriver being used with the MRI Um, yeah that that was a fun one one. that's a good wheelchair yeah that was really fun. I lo- I, I, I did this, like that. The slow mo kiss in the hospital too, with like the lights bursting out, and so all of the sparks drifting around them as they have their like big romantic kiss. I mm. love. Yeah, that was so beautiful. Romance movie, horror rom com, horror rom com, romance. I love it. I love it. Ugh, but I I almost. How does the end end? They they. They go back to the universe and the original universe and it's like they are there right after the thing has blown and the guy's like, my yoo-hoo. Samara's like, my yoo-hoo. Oh, Um, yeah. And then she's like, Danielle. And he's like, who? And it's like, ah! And then she makes out with him. Yeah, they kiss. Yeah. I I almost missed the after credit scene on, on this one completely. I totally I almost missed it. I was like, oh, it's so weird that like it's still playing the credits big because that's one of my big mm-hmm. things that pisses me off on streaming is that they the like they make them small. take away yeah. your opportunity to watch who worked so hard on this movie. Like, and also like the what credits in the first movie are really fun. By the way, yeah. for the record, the credits in the second movie are fun too. But the like stylish, cartoony credits the, the first, first one, one are so beautiful and cool those are really really cool so many fun things with like a cake and the baby on the mm-hmm. cake and the icing looking like all the characters is super cute yeah. um but yeah i i totally almost missed it and then it's just 
so funny. I mean, it's a little preposterous and crazy, but like, you know, they did create a machine that like bends space and time. Yeah. So the government <laughs> well, would probably get a little, is all a little it. ping on that. That's crazy. That, this makes it very Avengers Endgame <laughs> almost. <laughs> like it's, it feels like it's like uh, Samuel L. Jackson's character showing up, whatever his name is. I don't fucking Nick know. Fury. I don't want yeah, Nick Fury showing up being like, it's time. Um, but <laughs> but I, I love how petty the ending is. It's so petty. Like, okay. She learned a lot, but she's still a little bit of a bitch at the end she, of the day. It's also like she, you know, okay, this is one of my discussion questions. Is the Danielle post credits tease about how Danielle, especially this universe, Danielle, who is the terrible Danielle, most yes. terrible person in the world, Danielle, is it about how this Danielle is worthy of karmic punishment of t- being stuck in a time loop? Or is it about how we met another Danielle in the alternate universe who was not perfect but was a little bit better at least she's not revolted by the special needs art fair kids she is you know she does such good for the community um but, she's but is it about how on, on carter uh, she, yeah but nick is sexy have you seen him yeah. um and she's just like clearly she's a fucking fool for him but she is using carter i think to do her homework um 100 that's the part that really pisses me off <laughs> She's just using him but, to get a good grade. Well, my boyfriend, using class. my boyfriend Carter <laughs> to get a good grade. How dare you disrespect him? But oh. is Tree suggesting Danielle as a time loop victim test subject? Is that about how Danielle is worthy of punishment or about how Danielle is capable of rehabilitation? She's like, come on, girl. You can get, you can get, I, I was, went through I was time second. loop and I'm better for it. And I believe Danielle can get there too. This is, wow, you're right. It is coming from his <laughs> compassion, Chelsea. That is so true. Not I, compassion, but a belief in potential. That's a beautiful spin on it. For me, they're like, <laughs> Tree, so what do you think? And she's like. And she's like, that bitch kissed my I? boyfriend. They asked, her, they asked her, would you ever wish this on your worst enemy? And she says, yes. Yeah. I yes, would. And, she's and here also she my is. Best and it's Danielle. <laughs> <laughs> she is here my she best is. friend. There you and go. she kissed my boyfriend in an alternate universe. And she doesn't even know who he is in this one. But I still think she should be punished. Even though Tree kissed Danielle's boyfriend in this universe in the first movie. <laughs> and hey, Chelsea, in the other universe. <laughs> Chelsea, it's your birthday. And you were stuck in a time loop and you got and I out. I to pick up the phone. Now, would you send me or Monica in to continue? No. <laughs> I guess it depends who's wronged me most on that day. <laughs> so watch out. I'd be really mad. I don't need to experience this type of grief. I've already cried all day because you chose these dead fucking mom movies that hit me right in the fucking. They're so beautiful. So many horror movies that are about dead moms. It's so mean. I have an alive mom, but just a movie about the beauty of a relationship with your mom or how meaningful a relationship with your mom. Like that still gets me every single when her mom shows up, the first look at her mom in the sequel, I'm ready to start crying immediately. uh, Yeah. I really thought I was gonna cry this episode, but I think I'm so dehydrated that there's nothing left. And they're fun. They're fun. I think you they're were having fun. enough fun that you were able no, to no, it was, above it that was, emotion. I love it particularly because of that, because I felt so like a kinship with Tree. Yeah. You know, I really well, felt a kinship with her. I, I didn't like spit on just... Uber drivers when I was grieving hardcore, <laughs> to be clear. I did not become that much of a good, cunt. Good, good, But it does That's bring great. out the worst in everyone. <laughs> yeah. Um. Also, oh, plot hole. Well, it's not a plot Ooh. hole because Danielle doesn't kill her. Um. But I love in the first one, she discovers that Danielle is the person who's giving her the birthday card that says there's no tomorrow oh, or whatever. Oh, yeah, or, like, nothing happens. Is Danielle that. giving that to her? Does Danielle just, like, have it in between a bunch of whatever? But she's, they wrestle, and then they get hit by the bus, and then she crosses Danielle off of her suspects list. Girl, there's no reason that that would ever mean that Danielle is not the person killing you if she was. She's oh, yeah. not, but if she was... 
That would not prove anything that you guys got hit by a bus. To to die right then, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but you know, she was right. It's not Danielle. So awesome. Um, And I like that they fixed um, Carter's sideburns in between movies. They let him get rid of those silly sideburns in the sequel. Thank God. He's so cute. I love him. I love his hair. He's adorable. Um, Is it time to move into our Segamuntos? I think it's time. Also, I just want to say it's time. In our last Chelsea birthday episode, we did this and Chelsea was like, actually, I'm not ready to move into and she said Segamentos. I would just like to say that that came out of Chelsea's mouth. No, I, I didn't. Did it. No, no, I didn't. I didn't say that. <laughs> no, I. You're. Is this, that is coming across. This, this, this is fake news. <laughs> this is spreading misinformation. I'm you putting this on Snopes.com verified bang, false. Bang, Come on. Bang. My Noah's canceling microphone won't let me bang the gong. I just want to say we brought no. the boom, okay? I mm. I gone. Baby there face gone. says no. Okay. Um, okay, so the first question is how could these movies be gayer? Um they're so gay. They're so gay. They're gay. Yeah, they're gay. First of all, Tim's there. Love is love. Um, and in the beginning of Happy Death Day to You, we see he's sitting with a cute boy at a basketball game. So I love that part. Yeah, that was my favorite part. That I also actor love... is a stunt man. Also, like a lot yeah. of his work is stunt man work. He's a buff I love... daddy boy. I just call him a buff daddy boy, and I want to kill myself. <laughs> Hello, buff I love daddy when boy. she's spying on him. The scene where she's spying on him in his room, trying to figure out if he's the killer, and she sees what porn he's watching, and then you see her through the window go. <laughs> I love that. I love that you can see exactly what she mouths. I and then her face in that scene is just fucking perfect. Um, so good. But I yeah, I think mean, Danielle is a lesbian, actually. Really? Yeah. Okay. Interesting. She's giving high femme, but she's like lesbian. She's stupid for Nick. She's stupid for Nick. I agree. Okay. Hey, so, bisexual. Who hasn't been a no, little stupid maybe sometimes? No. Can, okay. First world Danielle, high femme lesbian. Second Danielle, straight woman. Mm, I almost would flip that. I would flip it. Because mm. the, the, the first, first one, one is the one, one where, she's where they're texting. at the party. And he yeah. says something. And I don't even. It's not even that funny or whatever. And she's like. And she's like. <laughs> Like she has that she's, crazy laugh. She's <laughs> trying too hard to convince herself that she has to like this man. I like the theory. I just switch it for me. No, I know too many. As a theater girly, that is unfortunately the straightest girl you've ever met. So, <laughs> well, I don't know in because the in the second one, in the other universe, is when Tree walks in on Nick in her room, and Nick is like threesome, and I absolutely believe maybe not this universe, maybe not the original universe, but it's somewhere in the multiverse. Those three are having a threesome. Oh, hundred percent. Oh, yeah. They're definitely. Poly. I want to go to that universe. For I sure. think Daniel and Tree have for sure made out probably in every universe, but sometimes it's like to be sexy to men at a party. Mm-hmm. Also, I think a pretty obvious one for queer representation in this, and I think we talked about this when we did our cursed first try of this, maybe. <laughs> I don't know. Practice it. But Lori feels yes. like she is in love with Tree and hates mm-hmm. being treated so poorly by her and like yes maybe they make it seem like oh she's mad that tree is with gregory and she wants to be with gregory but like i read it as she's mad that tree is with gregory because she wants to be with tree and And like she's with gregory because she wants to be tree or like yeah embody what tree has yeah it's like the roommate i can see that Mm mm-hmm it's giving the Literally. roommate. It's giving was it single white female or whatever? Is that yeah. the one that also yes, does yes, that? Yes. I have, still haven't seen it. Um, <laughs> but yeah, but yeah. I, I that's my favorite read. Like watching it this time around, I was like gay, 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 gay. Like the whole first fifteen minutes. <laughs> and I also it feels very like 
okay yes these women are in college and they are adults but also gregory is um not just a much older adult but an adult in a position of power over them as a professor and when tree says she's not in love with him and that makes him so horny he has to kiss her immediately um it very much feels like he is the one pursuing these young women um and so I think it's easy to imagine that a Lori in within the realm of last birthday week movie, not accepting yourself or not looking inward, um, that she is just like trying not to acknowledge any of those aspects about herself, trying not to acknowledge or question even the possibility of a queer identity and letting this older man who is pursuing her just kind of like move her along in the steps of like having some sort of straight relationship. Like she, he's, he's controlling the board in that way for sure. And she is, she wants to be desired. She wants to be wanted. um, And she doesn't want to have to look inward to see who she likes. So she's just letting herself be pursued. I think that goes really well with the whole grief narrative too because like when you're grieving you just want someone else to like pick up the reins and like drive the fucking car of your life because everything feels really hard so it makes sense that she'd like find some other like power source to like guide her as fucked up as it may be. But yeah, I mean, I think it makes sense for sure because it's both like she's letting him, Tree is letting him move the relationship along. And also I think she is like finding some power and being like, I'm seducing this man away from, I have I have agency even in this situation where I like kind of don't have agency. Hmm. Oh, totally. Yeah. Did we go over any gay things in Happy Death Day to you? That I mean, that continues. I feel like um, Lori is less gay for Tree in the second one. But it for is sure, an because they have a more peaceful um, relationship that doesn't, it's not fraught with that same tension. Yeah. In the second universe, she's not. She's not as gay. How about that? She's not. Her Kinsey scale is in a different <laughs> um, but the second one has the you are gay moment so that makes it a very gay queer film um, of course innately yeah, innately. yeah. <laughs> um okay are we ready to move on to our next question yeah matthew lillard where would he fit in these films Okay, I know I brought up how the dad looks like the baby mask and that is adding something to the movie, but no offense to that actor. I'm sure he's wonderful and is doing a lot of other things um, that are perhaps great roles, but he's just like not giving that much in these movies, you know what I mean? And perhaps it's not in the script for him, but can you imagine Matthew Lillard as the dad? Because Matthew Lillard would slay as the dad and I think he, he looks similar slay, enough yeah. to Jessica so Robbie that he could pull it off. And he would bring something so special to the role. And also you would hear just a little bit of his voice in one of the voicemails. And you would be like, is that Matthew Lillard? Yeah. And then he'd pop up later. It's almost like a reveal when you finally meet the dad in the first movie. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because you've been avoiding him for so much of the movie. Imagine if it was Matthew Lillard when he popped up. That would be so fucking incredible. And I think he and the mom actress would look good together. I agree. I, I would think also... also- Oh, I you think go, it's casting no, you from listen. a looks perspective for the characters. I would also like yeah. to see him as the dean. That's what I was going to say. <laughs> That's exactly what I was going to say. Yeah, mm-hmm. I think you would do wonderfully in that slapstick comedy bit. Yeah, but I also I don't think want his the nose dean, to be broken, that guy, but... he is absolutely giving. You know what I oh, mean? So, yeah. so funny. He's like he's perfectly giving. cast because he's yeah. like got that like, like, holier than thou i'm Mm -hmm. the dean of schools and you're being Mm -hmm. little miscreants vibe um (laughs) it's it's perfect he is perfect in that but maddie always adds maddie Mm -hmm. would kill as that but i if i were replacing a role in this movie i would want him to play the dad for sure okay okay wait wait wait, wait. time warp time warp we got the era of the curve this is Matthew Lillard from The Curve. That is exactly. Oh, I think exactly. we did talk about this. And we, we put we him in as but... Nick. Oh, yeah. I thought you were going to say young Carter. No, no, no. No, we no, like no, Carter no, too no. much. No, no, no. Carter oh. is, I love Carter. 
He wouldn't he wouldn't bring that same energy. He's yeah. got the sexy dumbass. He's played the sexy dumbass, the like slightly sinister. Mm-hmm. I could see him rocking out to dubstep that <laughs> Ugh, in the Sahara tent um, Ugh, yeah he, pleasure, he'd though. be really fun as Nick for sure yeah that'd be, be fun really one. fun as Nick okay it's time for dumb bitch imagine that it's the sound bite from this movie you're such a dumb you're bitch you're a dumb bitch, bitch. too so well, is funny. it tree I mean Lori says it's tree but Lori's also yeah. Not the most reliable narrator. She is doing murders, so. Oh, there's a lot of dumb bitches in this. I feel like Tree is a dumb bitch for a large part of it, but she rehabs herself, so she's not the dumb bitch. Mm-hmm. She does dumb bitch shit at first. You don't spit on an Uber driver. You, yeah, that's Why? bad. That's not nice behavior. Jesus fucking Christ. Well, you shouldn't like, spit everybody on Everybody has their bad Uber days. Drivers included. Okay. Everybody Danielle, has their bad bitch. days. On your worst day, don't do that. Uh, Danielle, Danielle is the dumb bitch. Dumb she's, bitch for sure. She's so evil. <laughs> she's so she's a, she's slay for sure. She's mm-hmm. amazing, but also she said something that made me gag. So <laughs> yeah, Lori, dumb bitch. Because again, you're killing somebody over a boy. It's not nice roommate behavior. She apologized to you, and you still left the cupcake for her in that one loop. You know what I mean? Like. I mean, obviously it was too late. She'd been terrible for too long leading up to that point. Um, But Lori, dumb bitch, at least a little bit for sure. Lori, very smart bitch. Because again, she really knows how to pivot every single fucking loop and work with what she's got and do something with the so punches. fucking slay every time. Come up with all of these very good kills. Um, She's got a, she's, you know, she's, she's, she's improving just as well as Danielle in the second universe. Um, yeah. But she is a dumb bitch for her motivations. All that Gregory, Gregory, dumb bitch for sleeping with his student. Gregory, dumb bitch for cheating on his wife also. Exactly. I love when she calls him out for that. Ryan, dumb bitch for being too much of a smart bitch to and too much of a dumb bitch simultaneously where he yeah. wielded so much power but didn't understand any of it and created two <laughs> versions of himself where he had to kill himself. Ryan coming in and being like fine vagine, murder myself immediately, and that being so much of his role, that's some dumb bitch qualities. It's dumb bitch this qualities. is why I'm bad at science. I would just be too powerful if I knew You'd science. Be too you know? powerful. Uh-huh. It wouldn't be good. We can't give you that. It would take you over can... the world. Be exactly. Terrifying. <laughs> I think that there's the jury. There can't be just one dumb bitch. And isn't that beautiful? There are too many so universes many. to pick only one. In the multiverse of madness, how many Each dumb bitches loop. are there? An infinite amount. In- Each time infinite. loop has its own dumb bitch. Yep. And every I, bitch is special. You know who's not me. a dumb bitch, but he also is a dumb bitch? Tombs. Because he said... um, I woke up with a mask on my face and a knife on my hand, and I said, "Let's fucking party, bro! Like I'm ready to That's go." That's my thing. I love. That's my thing. They I love left to do. Tools for me. I love this. And also, he sees tree right away, and she's his type from the news broadcast. She he goes, blonde, curly haired college girl. <laughs> Thank you, Santa. Thanks, Santa. Like he just got a little present <laughs> delivered right to him. Santa is real. <laughs> He's so happy to just be like, oh, my God, I love this. This day is working out so great. Yeah, so many beautiful dumb bitches for us to choose from. But I won't choose because they all have their merits. And they're wonderful. Are we ready for Knives Out of Fives? Knives Out of Fives. Knives Out of Fives. I would like to see these scores higher than they are um but they're not terrible um and the movies were financially successful which is good but the first movie on imdb it has a 6.6 out of 10 on rotten tomatoes it has 70 percent fresh from critics and 67 fresh 67 percent fresh from audiences the second movie happy death day to you it has 6.2 out of 10 on imdb has 71% fresh from critics on Rotten Tomatoes and 60% fresh from audiences on Rotten Tomatoes, which is like very close to rotten. 59% that would be rotten. Um, mm. But 
you know, it's it is fresh. Um, so again, I'd like to see those scores be better, but I will say, um, at both the 2017 IGN Summer Movie Awards and the 2019 IGN Summer Movie Awards, both of these films were nominated for Best Horror Movie. And at the 2017 Fright Meter Awards and the 2019 Fright Meter Awards, um, Jessica Rothi was nominated for Best Actress for both films. So I think that those nominations are very much deserved and like i said i think if you gave her an oscar for this role it would also be deserved the academy <laughs> would never but that doesn't mean it wouldn't be deserved well here let me start off and make you feel better about those scores not being as high as you wanted them to be because i'm giving both of these movies a five out of five um <laughs> they're is they're just great they're really fun really really creative and like weirdly poignant um uh, ruminations on they're grief so <laughs> oh my god they're fucking beautiful they're beautiful like i was really moved today and i wasn't expecting that and i'm now i'm really tired because i've been crying for so fucking long but like it was worth it it's great to revisit your feelings it's important and it's like such a healthy way to do it too where you are able to like microdose those emotions a little bit in a safe space to do so where you can like the story will resolve you can like disengage afterwards like it's, totally. it's great practice for people who um haven't experienced things like that like that's the whole thing about horror movies like it teaches you how to like be afraid and overcome it in many ways um and it like that i don't know i've seen a lot of discourse about like things that make you feel bad in movies sometimes and like a lot of the point is like you feel bad and you learn how to deal with that emotion before you have to deal with like really feeling bad about things in real life no, totally. I think that like it's it's not the same thing, but similar to what we were saying last episode, where like watching I saw the TV glow could tr maybe clue someone in who doesn't understand the trans experience at all a little bit about what it might feel like to be in a trans person's shoes. Sort of give you some of that discomfort, some of the, some of that feeling, maybe just to to give you a taste. And this movie can kind of give you a taste of of the the true realities of grief experienced by a young person and how it brings out the worst in you but you can come back and that sort of a thing so i think it's beautiful like i said before i want more horror rom-com i want to say rom comedies i don't know why i'm going to say it. horror <laughs> rom comedies i, I just want to say more syllables right now I just it's it's just so, so fun it's got everything that i love and it made my heart sing and Five out of five knives, both movies, perfect sequel. Danielle, work on how you feel towards people with disabilities. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I love these two movies back to back. Like Chelsea was right, because we watched the first one together, obviously. Um, and I'd never seen the second one. So this was my first like watch Ooh. of the second one. And I had no idea what to fully expect. And it like you think you're gonna give get something different and then you're like oh jk we're right back to the first one but then it is actually different so it's like throwing your head for a spin uh i will give this a 4.5 out of 5 for both movies play yeah i i am so glad that it resonates with both of you especially as a double feature i think it is like one of the most perfect double features in um horror cinematic history for sure but also just like in general to me this is like one of my favorite sequels of all time um I just think it absolutely does such a beautiful job of setting itself apart from the original but also being in conversation with the original mm -hmm. but also continuing those same like narrative arcs from the original but like going the next I don't know I think it's so incredible what it does and it's just as funny and entertaining as the first one it's less scary um and a little more yeah. silly a little more sci-fi it is less of a horror movie than the first one which is part of why I was like let's do the double feature because I think that was perfect yeah even if we did happy death day on its own I don't think you can do happy death day to you on its own you have to do that one with the first one um, it's kind of like how doing Scary Movie, we couldn't do it without Scream. Like it needed yeah. 
to be together. Mm-hmm. Um, and and specifically the mom stuff really comes home in the second one. Yeah. And so like it would feel like having watched the second one to not talk about that, talking about the first one wouldn't feel complete. So it was a yeah, good idea. Yeah, I mean, it it's just such an incredible duo it's such a flawless duo I love it so much I do need a third movie I don't think it'll be a perfect trilogy because these two are so intertwined Mm -hmm. um but I would love to see more from the characters I would love to see Danielle go through her own time I first of all I just think Rachel Matthews is so beautiful gorgeous entertaining incredible talented um she is i think i read this on imdb she is christopher landon's like niece um so oh that is um a fun (laughs) opportunity for her um and so that's why i I believe we could say it again the director oh i think yeah she she is the niece of the director um but she's absolutely earning her place you know what i mean and if she was in the third movie i think she'd be earning her place there i don't think she'd be the main character i think tree would still be the main character jessica rothy would still be the star um and also it would take place in this same original universe where tree has already gone through the time loop so it would be kind of like the beginning of the sequel where she's like walking ryan through it you know what i mean so like we would have this tree that has this experience and can speak to it and like whatever like who else would danielle go to you know what i mean um but trilogy aside um we may never get it if we don't i'll learn to live with it because these two movies are just the the perfect marriage perfect double feature one of the best double features in existence gorgeous sequel i love it so much what he wrote the screenplay the uh sorry christopher landon wrote the screenplay for like all the paranormal activity movies and yeah. Disturbia. Oh, Disturbia. Wait, is that Landon's a sign? I, I mean, I oh think it is a sign. God. I think it's a sign. Yeah. A sign? Yeah. From God? What? Yeah. Of what? For, for, for next what week? we're going to be doing next week. <laughs> I forgot. Just as soon as I... Just as soon as I deliver my my knives out of fives, which by the way, I'm giving six knives out of fives, which I've done before, um, but wow. I'm doing again because I just think it's two movies. So it del- it, it deserves an extra little boost. Um, flawless. Love it so much. It's birthday. It's so close to my birthday. Um, and it's my birthday today. And I'm just feeling bristled with love for these films. So six knives. I love that. I love that. Wait, did we decide what we're doing next week? I think we that moment but decided moment. what we're doing. Oh, That's what we're yeah. saying. That's the sign. That's the oh, sign, okay. Monica. Okay, okay, okay. Hey. But I also kind we're, of felt in my heart I'm that down. that was maybe the way things were going. I think it's a good call. I think it's a good choice. I think it's a great I'm call. Down. And we've never dipped I'm our down. toe in. And I've never seen them, any of them. Really? Really. Yeah. Oh. I fucking love them. Okay. So I think it's We've already said it. Sydney. It's Paranormal Activity, the OG, the 2007 it's our season four finale, right? Mm-hmm. Well, I don't, actually I don't know. I don't know why I'm saying uh huh. Um, but it's our season four finale. We got to go out on a bang. This is a franchise we haven't touched yet at all. I know. Yeah, and there's okay, so, so many of them too. He didn't write the first one, just so to be clear. But it is still, still, well, it was still a sign. It was still a sign. <laughs> it's a sign. <laughs> okay. But I'm excited because I signed a petition to get a uh, paranormal activity made back in the day. I've brought this up on different episodes. <laughs> but like there was like I just watched like some little video. I don't really totally remember, but they had like a crowdfunder thing where they were trying to get more funding. Kickstarter or, like, or could, whatever. Kickstarter. I don't think I gave them money, but I, I definitely did something. I was in high school. I didn't have money. Well, so I don't think I gave them money. But um, apparently everybody's name is supposed to be in the credits. And like in the credits, Ooh. there's like 45 billion million names. Like not actually, but like so many. So I never found mine, but we'll see. Maybe and it I'll might not even be again. in there. And I might not have actually done it. But I thought I helped make this movie happen. <laughs> and that's, you and that's how I feel. You at the very least. Yeah, I I haven't seen this in years, but I remember like going to the theater for 
a lot of the sequels at the very least. Thumbs up. Um, so this will be this will be a fun one and a fun way to close out the the season. The season close four the season. is almost done. Uh, and can you believe? Can you I'm believe? I'm glad we're doing a found footage movie. That was a nice little treat for Monty. Thanks, babes. Once again, <laughs> it's Chelsea's birthday. Here's a treat for Monica. Here's a treat for I Monica. Love that. I Thank guess you for that being means so I put Sydney to me. in the time loop, or maybe should maybe. Because if I have a favorite in Monica, maybe Sydney goes in the time loop. Or maybe if I'm giving gifts to Monica, Monica goes in the time loop. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, I've had a hard day already. I this don't a get hard to week. go into the time loop. Yeah. Well, you guys, whenever you're in the time loop, just let me know and we'll see who it is. I really <laughs> don't need that trauma right now. See? Uh, <laughs> um but yeah just another reminder we've got merch 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 going on right now merch available for purchase grab a sweatshirt put it in the tote bag wear your t-shirt on your head i don't know there is a beanie anything that you could possibly want we are selling at spookytuesdaypod.com if you click on the word merchandise um so it's very exciting it's very sexy and shout out again to ryan brahm he's the one who did our beautiful rebrand a few months ago and he did this beautiful artwork for us as well that is excitingly based off of one elvira vibes two hex girl vibes three a photo shoot that we did last month um where we are sexy vampires so maybe you'll see those photos sometime soon if i can get my fiance to edit them so we will see. <laughs> um, but yeah, once again, the poll question is, would you, is it better to be feared or loved? <laughs> I'm not coming up with anything other than that. It's very interesting. You can write you in the comments. You don't want to do what um, reality show where a random character be watching in the third movie? You didn't like that one? Chelsea, it's your birthday, so I guess you can do whatever you want. And you do the poll question, so we'll see. So but I see think it, it would be up. super <laughs> fucking funny. You could have this. I'm going to make up a this. reality no, 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 no. show. Listen to me. Listen to me. Listen to me. Would you? Is it better to be feared or loved or which or which or reality which... TV show would you want to be and have Just feared, like I did the love, Olsen and twins. the series of reality um, TV I know shows. what you did last summer one. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> do that. It's perfect. Okay, cool. So you can ask answer the hard question or the easier one, or maybe equally hard, depending on how strongly you feel about reality television. Um, <laughs> and that brings us to my time where I say, give us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts. We would love it. It's our finale. Say, wow, four seasons. It's our finale next season, next episode, excuse me. But wow, you're almost done with four seasons. How sexy, how amazing. Four seasons. Five stars. It makes sense. Um, It just really flows. It really, like, say five stars because I'm so excited for season five. Wow. There mm -hmm. you go. Easy. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That makes sense to me. It really makes a lot of sense. Also, why not follow us on social media? We're at Spooky underscore Tuesday on pretty much everything except for Facebook and Tumblr where we are at Spooky Tuesday Pod. Speaking of Spooky Tuesday Pod, put a dot com after that. And there's our beautiful, sexy website where you can find the link to our merchandise. Once again, a reminder. You can also find a link to our Patreon on there. Ooh, and as a reminder... Ugh. Our Patreon's really fun. We're having a great time in the Discord. We have new friends joining all the time. And the patrons all knew that the merch was coming weeks ago and they saw the art weeks ago because they're in the Discord and they're getting exclusive content. So you could be experiencing that as well. Consider it. And um, I think that's all the things that I usually say. YouTube, Chelsea looks gorgeous today. It's her birthday. Don't you want to look at her and say, damn, girl. Don't you want to see baby face for the mask? price of one? Damn, Two girl. for the price of one? And then zero from Sydney and I. I made <laughs> a shirt, but I don't want to dress up. She's, She's wearing really a good. shirt, Monica. Yeah. Thank God you wore clothes to this day, <laughs> this episode. As we discussed, we're a group of nudists. <laughs> yeah. A group of nudists. So we got her to wear clothes, and it's a great look. It's a really great look. Um, She's wearing our Spooky Tuesday hat. So another merch reminder. Um, but at the end of the day, I have to say thank you so much for listening. Happy birthday, Chelsea, once again. Love Happy you. Chelsea. Beautiful, Beautiful, Beautiful. Beautiful butch queen icon Beautiful. legend. Very sexy, very sexy. Happy birthday, um, baby. That's another time loop Easter egg. <laughs>
<laughs> and we will see you next Tuesday. Bye, spookies. Spooky Tuesday was created by Monica Height, Sydney Thompson, and Chelsea Duff, and edited by Sydney Thompson. Our gorgeously spooky tunes are all thanks to Tamara Simons, who you can follow on Instagram at great18. That's gr818 underscore. And our podcast art is by Ryan Brom, who you can follow on Instagram at Ryan Brom Art. That's R Y A N B R O M M A R T. Learn more about Spooky Tuesday at SpookyTuesdayPod.com and subscribe to our Patreon at Patreon.com slash Spooky underscore Tuesday.